All right, just make sure all your uh, YouTube things are muted, guys. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome, um, everybody. There seems to be some people in, which is very, very nice. We're getting all the bings and beeps as we are all. We're trying a new program. Um, let's see if I can go. There you go. We're trying a new program. Um, that's why the Brandon's still up in the top right there that allows more than one person to come onto YouTube. Um, YouTube changed everything. I'm just going to mute Paul for a second because he's getting funny beeps coming through. Welcome, one and all. Yes, first sort of live stream in nearly a year uh, on a Saturday night. So tonight I have a with me. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing working. So we've got three sheets himself. Gordon's alive. Evening, guys. Somebody's pinging away. We also have a spruce surgeon himself, Mark. Good evening. Good evening. And we have a plastic monkey. Yes. All right, there, plastic monkey there, there, Paul. Oh, he's, 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 he's broke the internet. Oh, Paul. I broke, yeah, I broke the internet, man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. <laughs> right. Internet works through that door. Yeah, it's not open the door to let the internet in. <laughs> yeah. So, that works down in heaven. We do have a translator on standby. His name's Barney um, for, for Paul. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look festive. Uh, and I can see Frankie goes to Hobbywoods in, so I've got his sex and drugs and alibirth, which basically means sex, drugs, and all the sausage uh, t-shirt on. But yeah, we're just, I'm just trying out all the different... What looks better to you guys? Uh, the four of us like this? Or the four of us like this? Or... Hide all the other ones and put gorgeous me on. I, I quite like this one. So anyway, yeah, thanks all for, for joining in. That's quite a, quite a few people in, actually. Um, 12, 12 in at the moment, which is really good. I'm just getting used to all that. So who was first in? Mm. It was, oh, let me see. That was Robert Justin that was first in tonight. Yay! What do you mean? Somebody's microphone's going a bit strange. Uh, who else is next in? NESR, I believe that's uh, Northeast Scale Railways. Am I right in that one? Um, Fart me away, everyone. I've not, I've not seen Fart me away in before. Greetings all. Just going to mute you for a second, Paul. It sounds like you're eating your microphone. Oh. Yep, that's better. Uh, Frankie goes to Hobbywood is in. Who else? Fraser Green's in. Hello, Fraser. He's giving it. Hey, all. Oh. I'm just playing all the buttons. Uh, something called Sci-Fi Fantasy. That's that's a new one. That's Kenny. That's Kenny. Kenny. Yeah. Who killed, who killed Kenny? He's um yeah, I got my I got my prize today from um you remember I was telling you earlier on uh about oh, Kenny's space loot about his and he's got the space loot and the raffle and everything. Was that, that him? That, yeah, that's him. Yep. Ah, because you were telling me it was an interesting thing. When you watched his show, you built up like credits and then he did a raffle thing with the credits and you could buy raffle tickets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant, and I I got um, so the last time I was on, uh, well not the last time I was on, but I won these. Well, I didn't win them. I bought some raffle tickets uh, with my space loot, and um, I won these. That's cool. Yeah, spaceship weathering set with a piece of generator on the front. I don't know yeah. what that's about, but. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. If, if you look at some of the games that you play, I don't know if you've ever played Fallout or anything like that, and it's set in sort of a dystopian future where there's been nuclear holocaust and all that, and there's rusty generators and that about. It could be something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I haven't thought of it like that. Kind of sci-fi. Yeah. Um, and sci-fi fantasy. I'm glad it made it safe and sound. On uh, Alec, I never get his name right, all the way from Romania. Alexandru Mo Moisi? Moise? No idea how to say your name, but he's he's given it a whole smooth. I'll try unmuting Paul again. Yeah, see if it's still so. <coughs> oh, how's how it there in your barn? All right there, mate. Proper job, proper job, sir. Yeah. Pro proper job. Did you get that wheel back in your tractor again? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> so I'm kind of getting used to this because I've got two chats. I've also got the normal chat uh, popped out as well. So I'm just going to flip through there because it seems to update quicker on there than it does in the this new thing that we're trying. So we've got, let's see if I can catch up with chat. NASR's going, hope the pizza was good. Don't want to see it in my face. It was rather good, actually. I inhaled it. Uh, fuck me away. Greetings all. NASR's going, hi, Frankie's was away getting a drink. Don't get too drunk. All you need is sex, drugs, and a la burst. Remember, just lots of sausage, Frank. Um, do, 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 do. Frank is going, hi Paul and Mark, and hello Gordon and all the others. Hi Frankie. So it's like, yay, we're on. We're all saying hello to each other. Um, do, 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 do. Just catching through the chat. Yeah, it's been quite a while since you've been on, isn't it, um, Terry? You've yeah. been on. Stuart, Stuart Bremner's on it. It's been a good... <clears throat> I think that apart from the couple of wee lives that I did where I was just testing to see if I could still get it working, um, the last lives were at Christmas last year. Yeah. Um, so it's a good year or so, I think, um, yeah. since I had the last live on, on a Saturday evening. Um, so, yeah, just, just trying it out. Now, as I say, this stream, you have to back. See how it goes, actually. It, it's all going to depend. Obviously, I've not built any models since December last year. Uh, these guys are all still at it. I've I've been hiding. I'm probably still on the same models that I was on December last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just waiting for uh, Iris John coming in and going RD. What about the RD Terry? That's three years I've been on that now. He's out at darts. Out at darts. Oh, he's out doing darts tonight. Oh, how inconsiderate. <laughs> oh, Frankie's Frankie's uh, big sausage is in the fridge. I've got a big sausage in the fridge as well. Mm. He said the actress to the bishop. You've been pretty busy as well, Paul, haven't you? you you're still doing the old styling yeah. therapy. Yeah, I'm the shit modern. Um, just finished the stuff. Shit, yeah, I'm on a ship again now. Oh, I'm good. On, uh, on my own here. I can't even sure, you look like you're in your bedroom. I'm on one of them now. Oh, don't let me click on you. Let's see if we can get this to work. Yeah, that's a big beastie. Big trumpet or Russian uh, uh, cabin. Robo oh, one oh. battleship. Mm. Oh, I like that. That's what I'm on now. Was that was that excuse me, I've got the hiccups now because I ate that pizza so quick. Is, is that an expensive kit? That's... No, it's only about £22 that one. Not a, it's, it must be an earlier one because there's a lot of flash for it. So. Well, it was a bit flashy. Yeah, not one of their better kits. Is that a 17... Is it 1750? Yeah, 1350. 1350 scale. So it's yeah. still going to be a big boat, isn't it? Uh, it's just over 30 centimetres long. The World oh, War One. Battle cruiser. It is oh. going to be one of your smaller ones, then, isn't it? Compared to your. Uh... Me turpits, yeah. Yeah, you should get your you should get your tur your turpits down, and um, show people yeah. that. Yeah, oh, don't dazzle us with the camel though. Yeah, he's too long, isn't he? He's too big that one. Yeah, but that wasn't what Sue was saying the other day, though. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't think it'll show up. I think it's too big. The old pitch is um, nice build. 
Yeah, yeah, finished it. Yeah, yeah, no, finished no. it. Yeah, have you? No, I got all the railings and that pad up. Well, oh, uh, okay. metal barrels and that on it, is it? Yeah, metal barrels. Not a photo etch to it. It's the platinum kit. So. Yeah, if you, you really need it. If you want to see that, um, go into any of the channels that Paul's a member of and have a look. And he's got a lot of close-up pictures um, of some of the photo etch and that on there. It's very nice. Yeah, he is. We've, we've got Stuart Bremner in this evening as well. Hey, Stuart, how you doing, mate? Yeah, that's a long time no see. Uh, Pardon? So where do we come from, Stuart? Stuart Bremner. Yeah. Well, Stuart. Stuart. Stuart Bremner's been a follower of the channel for a while. You'll need to type yeah. in the chat where, where Stuart's from. Um, Fraser's asking what's everyone been up to. He's just about to finally start his 40k army after about a year of build up. Chris is uh, in for I'll, I'll let you make your own comments about yeah. this. Um, this. Chris one. says, hi all, just popping in as I'm out. That's a bit. <laughs> just popping, popping in, in as out. I'm out. <laughs> That's like a, double, like a double negative or something. I don't know. It's just popping in as I'm out. <laughs> He's out having a few Christmas bevies. Oh. No. It's a good thing to be doing. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to lay off it. I'm off it. Uh, okay. um, who else is in the chat? Let's have a wee look. Sausage in the thing. Stuart Bremner's making an airfit 148 Hunter in RE Fanborough scheme. That's John as eyes are lighting up at the moment. What are you guys up to? I'm up to very little, but. Uh, I'll pass you over to the other guys and see what they have actually been doing. I've, I've been growing facial fungus, and that's all I've been doing. Who wants to go first? Paul's had a wee... Oh, what, oh, oh let's have a, have a little look. What's Mark up to? Oh, I'm just... Um, I'm, that looks I'm, like a YouTube. I'm trying to move the camera, but I'm moving it on a delay, so um, I'm moving it. And then ten seconds later, it moves, but I'm <laughs> I'm well, adjusting it already. <laughs> you've got your so, channel out though, haven't you? So watch it on the um, on the on the hangout thing with the duck. Oh what's yeah, yeah so I'm watching it on the YouTube feed. No, it's about a six second delay between what yeah. you actually thing and what comes up. Yeah, that's not helping at all. That's better. Hold on. Now, yeah, that's more like it. Now I can. Um, yeah, so I'm building this uh, train. It's the big boy, Revel Big Boy locomotive. Um, I've been building this for. Uh, I was. I wasn't actually joking when I said that I was on with this. Um, probably last year, because I think I was. I think I probably just started it. Is it uh, a motorized one like a Hornby? Is it the same scale? No, no, no. It's it's just um, you get this little bit of track here. Mm -hmm. which um, I've sort of done. And then you just build up this uh, big boy locomotive that sits on there like that. Um, it is... Is that a trumpet or a kit? Oh, you need to come up a bit. Oh, it's a Ravel. Yeah. One, there's, there's Ravel and the funny skills again. 187. Yeah, 187. <laughs> Um, that's, that's the scale that makes it fit the box. <laughs> yeah, if, if to be honest, the, I'm, I'm I don't enjoy I'm not enjoying it that much. That's why it's taken so long. Um, I I've seen a couple of ones that I was interested in, and they were well, what what am I doing there? Let's go back. To that one. Um, I don't know if it was the Trumpy ones or whatever, but it looked as if they had a lot of nice detail on it. It would be nice to try all the different metallics out, the copper pipes and brass pipes and all yeah. that. Yeah, I had a similar um, idea when I set this out. And when I first started, it was pretty good. I mean, I, I can't really tell, but um, I'll, hold on, I, I know what I'll do. 
I know what because most of the detail as with all these things is hidden hidden away inside uh, let me try and position this uh, there Oh, so the details inside, or the furnace and everything, and the yeah, clock. So right, right, yeah. There's all the. Uh, can't get yeah, it. It's quite hard because it's a long tube. Oh, maybe. There we go. Right. Okay. Right. So, it's, so I've, I've done this orange effect with the furnace, which is yeah, meant yeah. to. Oh, and now I'm on my phone right, as well. Okay. Right. So it's, um, I've done this <laughs> We seem to be experiencing critical difficulties. Do you know adjust your size? Oh, I, I'm, oh, it was gross. Press the gross models. It says good to see the stream on. Ah, right. And he was pop, pooping in and popping, pooping, popping out. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, that's the only thing. This is quite um, weird having the two different chats. I'll stick with the YouTube live chat because it seems to be um, more up to date. So, uh, bum, 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 popping in, pooping out. Stuart Bremner lives in a very, a very wet field, Kent. Kent, down in Kent. Very wet. I used to know a woman like that once. Um, Fraser, sod Christmas. It's an unneeded waste of money. I've lived it to buy presents first. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, Frankie goes to Hollywood saying hi, Chris. Fart me awake. <laughs> that is Bob. I was thinking that was Bob. Yeah. Like, absolutely. As soon as he mentioned the vodka, I thought that's Mr. Bob Bobbington. Bob changed my name. Bob person. Well, um, I really didn't um, didn't think that was him. Oh. It's when I seen the English flag because he usually has an English flag up, doesn't he? Usually yeah. Some sort of English flag. Uh, on the uh, NESR, who obviously likes his railways, is going nice big boy spoo. I, I take it, yeah, you. I take it as referring to your locomotive and not um, your sausage. Well, I'll, I'll take either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you take <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to rephrase that, Mark? You, you take the sausage, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear right um yeah, yeah it's definitely bobbington because it's saying it's taking you a year and a half more like i'm i'm making no comment on the time it's taking you to do your locomotive because i've been so long in the rz250 it's yeah um alexandru is saying big boy 46.4 cm nice oh so somebody else that knows our trains i fancy doing one but is it the trumpet trumpet do the better ones or is it just reveal I can't tell you. they do uh, some one for the scale ones don't they armor scale i seen one on e-models was it last year that was there was two and it was similar to what mark's got you had the short section of track and then there was a two different locos but i think they were trumpet kits <laughs> as i i think the trumpeter ones are the better ones on I've not seen one, but from what I've heard, they are slightly better. I don't know. <coughs> What's the detail like on that? I mean, can you see all the pistons and rods and? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's a lot of detail on this. Um, um, let me just see. You you've got. I mean, I I do like the way that the wheels and all the track links that all the. Um, the your camera's a bit low. There we go. Right, I'm going to click on you now. Where am I? Where am I? Hold on, hold on. Because I've got to go back. Oh, to... I saw that I'm some interested in other push rods and pistons and yeah, all that. Yeah, right. see, oh, this all turns. Is that metal? No. Oh, it's all plastic, but it... oh, no, that's cool. Yeah, see, it all turns, which is quite surprising because normally when you get these. <laughs> um kits where you've not got to glue parts and and you glue other bits when it comes to them actually moving oh, they don't that. normally go very well do they uh, but, right. uh surprisingly it all turns rather smoothly especially uh, with the bell cut yeah yeah it all both sides so oh that's cool 
I wonder if the Trumpy ones are like that. That's, yeah, okay, that's but, cool. Um, you can see there's plenty of detail on, uh, if we can get on in the there. Carriage, the rivets and all that. Not I'm going to count how many rivets is on it, but there seem to be at least seven along that main main drive wheel. Um, yeah, and then on the main... A uh, big double boiler, yeah. That's all right. Loads, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, everything. yeah. On the front there, you've got the big uh, uh, nuts and that, or whatever it is that holds. Ah, you're going in and checking all your pipes, yeah. Because you've got to clean your pipes out every now and again, get all suit out. And then uh, one of the one of the best detail pieces, I think, is the coal. Um, oh. They've got this. It gives you uh, a cool carriage, yeah. Yeah, that's the coal. All right. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Coal carriage. And, uh, you know, there's lots of very fine sort of piping and that that you've got to be careful of, especially getting rid of the. Um, there, there was. Steam uh, lock, stuff like that. There was a brass or copper paint that you rubbed on that uh, Ted Ward used on his torpedoes and his submarine. Rub and buff. Yeah, it was a kind of waxy based stuff. Yeah. That'd be quite good for doing all the brass pipe work and stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah. I was always going to get it and try, but I never had any tor large torpedoes or sausages to uh, put it on and buff it up with. <laughs> I think Paul's fell asleep. Uh, it's there. He's, he's, he's sitting there with his granddad pipe. He says it's a vape, but he's sitting there like Sher Sherlock Holmes, giving it. Oh, I remember days when I would put you on the knee, young whippersnapper, you are. That's it. Whereabouts where where in the beautiful UK are you from, Paul? Again. Exmoor. Exmoor. So is that is that like like Dorset? No, it's been like the Highlands of Scotland. No, it's just at the end of the country. Just at the end of the country, yeah. So, do you actually get broadband, or do you just got loads of really quick flying pigeons depositing data packets back and forwards at the? No, Sue's downstairs winding a wheel. Ah, right. On okay. A, hey, on a yeah. bicycle. <laughs> hey, it's advanced a bit then. <laughs> a little bit from the last time, yeah. Yeah, last time we were on, it was a tin can and a bit of string. That's it. Yeah. Um, no. Hello, do you hear me? <laughs> Catch up with chat again. So tonight we, we've got absolutely nothing planned. As I say, it's been actually probably about a year to the day since I did a Saturday Night Live. So depending on you guys in the chat, um, coming up with topics or questions or anything like that, um, to keep the conversation going, it'll be a rather short show. Uh, but it's, it's basically just testing out this program. Now, the interesting thing about this program, um, although, oh, it actually tells us how many people's watching as well. We're up to 17. That's not bad, considering I've not been on for a year. Um, this, this program that we're using just now is free, um, but it's got a limit of the number of hours that we're allowed to broadcast with. So it's something like, uh, I don't know, we would probably get about three shows a month out of it. Uh, if I was going back to regular Saturday nights again, and we can be anything for an hour to three, four hours, depending on, on what the chat's like, um, we could run out of program to use to, to do these group sort of hangout live show type things. So I've run into a dilemma that obviously I'm not working. So this isn't a begging message. Um, but StreamYard charge... If, if I want to remove like their banner and you know I have unlimited streams anything that we want is twenty twenty dollars a month, which to a lot of people doesn't seem like a lot of money, and it isn't. If I was able to get twenty patrons all donating one dollar a month, it would pay for it, and I wouldn't have to worry about where the money's coming from during the streams. So it's just a suggestion and an idea. You don't have to. Uh, but it's certainly quite a, an intuitive and easy to use program and we quite like the quality and everything of it um really easy to set up and it interfaces brilliantly with youtube but i can't afford 20 dollars a month so if i'm thinking about going back to saturday night live shows 
you might be looking for a, a wee bit of help. It's up to you guys, of course. Um, you, you might think, ah, well, if you want to do a live show, you've got to put to do it yourself. And we'll just keep using the, the free one until it says one Saturday when we want to go live that you've not got enough hours left. Don't know quite how it works. So I just thought I'd put that out there. Uh, I do have a Patreon channel. As I say, it's not begging, but the donations start at a dollar. And if I could get 20 people that like watching Saturday night live streams to become one dollar patrons, that pays for the unlocking of this program for us. Up to you guys, but I'll, I'll leave that there. So I'm not going to do any more Patreon type stuff. But it was just a, an idea, a suggestion to take the burden off of me. Anyway, what do, you, do you think that's a reasonable request to folk? Yeah, I don't, um, you know, it's, you're not uh, telling them, you, you know, you're not saying, that if, if you don't give us this, we're not going to do anything. It's, you know, just you're asking. I'm limited if it runs out, yeah. What's the dollar, about 75p? I don't know. Well, the $20 fee is about 16 quid that we looked at, and it's £16 a month. So if there was like, you know, the, the time I know that Patreon take their week cut and all the rest of it. If you were getting twenty people day in a dollar, it is, it's like 70, 75 pence once a month. Yeah, it's just an idea. But I mean, I, what, what thing, I'm thinking about trying to do Saturday Night Lives again. Uh, obviously, I'm doing um, electricity at the moment, so I'm not really doing any model making. Everybody else is quite busy with a plastic and styrene therapy. John got an interesting kit today, didn't you, mate? <laughs> yeah. For ten pounds. But oh. the thing is, it's one of these models that right, I'll, I'll just put John up on the screen, Mr. Three Sheets. Right. It's a Boeing B fifty Charter Fortress by uh, is it an old Revel kit? It's the old Rev it's the old monogram one. Oh ten right. No ten pound. Ten quid, yeah. It is um, showing it. What is there a bleep button on this? No, I just I just go fucking hell. All oh, right, John, you yeah. bastard. I yeah. as well. He actually took the fuselage out, and it looks like it. Yeah, a large sausage. And I always say, guys with small willies always buy the planes with the biggest fuselages. But that, that's absolutely massive for a that tenner. Is. is it is it a pilot ship kit or is it an R8 kit? Yeah. Right. It's, it's basic. A big a bit of work on it. Re rivet it. Re scribe it. Oh, right. oh, we're getting back into rivets again. I forgot. I forgot this hobby had a thing about rivets and planes. Yeah. Where did you get that from then, John? eBay. eBay. Yeah. How do you always do that stuff? There's never anything on eBay for a tenner when I look. No. Nah. When you I look, I like. <laughs> Oh, this oh, is yeah. it. I'll, I'll go on and I'll type in part-built kits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's somebody else who should do that as well. Kits, 48 scale, part-built kit. Pull it apart and re-strip it and yeah. redo it. Uh, shot damage kits and stuff like that. Ah, because you're not bothered about the box because you're actually building them. I suppose people there's a lot of people who collect the boxes just for the, the box art with the kits and say never build them. Well, this is it. I mean, for what, uh, about eight, nine months ago, I got an email off a guy asking me if I'd be interested in some uh, flood damage kits. They're all in poorly bags. Right, so mm, I went down to look and his carriage was basically what it was. It, he was a model maker like us, and he'd got a big shed at the bottom of the garden, and right. we had that flood water. And his shed floated down to your back garden and you just took all the kits out. His, his, his shed literally floated down his garden to his back door. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he, he didn't lose all his stash, but he lost a, a good chunk of it. But the same as he says, there's no good to me because the boxes have gone, the decals have gone. But the kits are fine. So, so and sometimes you can usually download them sort of things can't you for like uh, skill mates and stuff but if he's a model builder surely just losing the boxes and the decals isn't the end of the world is it you could still 
Yeah, but what a lot of the kits that he got were collectors kits and stuff as well. All oh, right, so you really need the box to go with for, it, it, to keep for value. Hard. He got a couple of the 30 second scale Harry GR ones that Revels just re release, right? In the original boxings in the cellophane, all right. But right, before right. Walter had got into them and knackered them up, and there was no use to him. Ah, uh, right. I remember did the FX no bring out like basically like little hand packs years ago where it was just a plastic bag with all the kit inside and it just hooked on a hook, yeah. Was it FX? Yeah. yeah. You know, Rebel, in Hobbycraft, I saw them in uh, the other day. I went in and they've got some Star Wars kits hanging on their pegs, and they are in a, in a bag hanging on a. Right. There are no, no boxes with them. Um, and they're just small, it's small TIE fighters, um, X Wings, stuff like that. And it's in the, the bags are about. Uh, so the bag's about that that big, yeah. Um, and they're they're all hanging on it. I think that I think they're easy click kits, but they oh, are back up. Yeah. Just got to quickly catch up in the chat because um, northeast, south, west, railways. Uh, sorry guys, he's got to go. He'll watch the replay when he gets back. Take care for now and have a great Christmas. Same to yourself, young man. Yeah. Uh, what's NESR was in the electric 160, 160, 160 scale. So that's, oh, but is that bigger than the double O stuff? I don't know. Um, NESR saying you'll have to put a link for your donations. Oh, there's, what? When we finished, all, all my videos go up with links to um, Smooth Cave and all that. And if you want to become a Patreon, the links will all come up automatically. So if you do want to chip in, feel free. Uh, Stuart was saying £10 for that kit, John. That's a bargain. It really is. Yeah. Um, another suggestion is a swear box for donations. <laughs> oh, I'll fill that myself. Um, I'm not over yeah. keen on that idea. What's that? Yeah. Thank you. an idea. All you bastards will be putting it in left, right. Yeah. Now. I would be down a fiver already. Aye. Oh, that's shocking. <laughs> right. So, guys in the chat, uh, we've, as I say, we've not been prepared. Uh, I've not really been building anything. So, we need the guys in the chat to keep putting comments up even if you want to talk about like 1970s discos what you're getting for christmas um do you call them kilted sausages or do you call them pigs in blankets we're coming up for christmas have you got anything special planned all that sort of stuff um get it up in the chat don't be scared we don't bite much um what i should do is a sponsored shave off santa's beard after christmas but then I, I should donate it to a charity for like children or something. That would probably be the best bit. But yeah, I, I'm trying to see how far away from my face I can get this. I was in my. You're I was a bit in like a pillow like pad with a Santa hat. Yeah, I, I am a pillow <laughs> pad. <laughs> you, well, we you pink soap. You're just jealous because you can't grow a beard. Because if you did, you'd be able to turn your head upside down and then it looked like you got yeah, a beard here. Yeah, yeah, I would. Look like a <laughs> yeah, you have got more hair on your chin than I've got on my head. I've got more hair on my head than you've got on your head, although I'm getting a bit more face to watch every day, so yeah, it is receding a bit. Um, yeah, free, free Santa hat out of pub. This is all back to front. Where's my bobble? Let's put it to that side. Bar humbug. I couldn't find a bar humbug hat. I hate, I hate Christmas anyway. Uh, Fraser saying he's not having any big Christmas plans. Everyone's working. Of course, if anybody that's in, I know um, Black Rifle Model Works, um, he's a paramedic. So while well, we're all sitting eating, you know, your Christmas dinner and that, all the paramedics and firemen and policemen and that are all still out working. So Christmas is just another day for them, isn't it? Um, he's going to have an Indian or a Chinese delivered. 
I never thought about having an India on Christmas Day. I know the Chinese is, yeah, I'm a Chinese. But I like my kilties, but I might just buy kilted sausages and <coughs> fried rice. Does that, does that sound like a good Christmas dinner? Sweet and sour kilted sausages. <laughs> I'm not into sweet and sour. Maybe curry, would curry sauce go with, with kilted sausages? Mmm. So I, I, I think it would. Or, or just off the Bustle gravy. No, you know, no. just, just a big a big pile of fried or chicken fried rice or, or something like that. And then all oh. the cold sausages on the top and then gravy. And go, and then. Gravy on rice. No. No. Well, no. I do it with chips. Sometimes I'll get burger and chips and I'll pour gravy over the chips. Yeah, you can go and get gravy. gravy on chips, but gravy on rice. No, 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 no. Have you tried it? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know if you try it. Chips and gravy. No. I, I don't <laughs> eat uh, jelly sandwiches. I I don't need to try them either. I know that I won't like them. <laughs> a, a jelly piece. You only put a jam piece. Uh, jelly. Uh, I. Uh, how can we? Jelly uh, jam. A relative jam. of Angela's has jelly and ice cream sandwiches. Oh. Oh, instead on waffles, on two slices of bread. Yeah, on bread, yeah. Actually, I think that would work if it was toasted in a breville. So put your scoop of ice cream on and a wee bit of jelly, put it together, pull the breville shut, seal it in, hot on the outside, bite into it. Yeah. Yeah. When you bite into it, when you bite into it, this steaming hot liquid comes all over your face and burns, you third degree burns from... Yeah, you end up near an E for Christmas because you've got yeah. ice cream. How do you get burn yeah. your ice cream? How do you burn your face? Well, we've got jelly and ice cream in the Breville Maker. <laughs> How else? I've, I've had ice cream with chopsticks once. I was, I was in Ibiza in a Chinese restaurant. You know how they bring out the little tubs of like vanilla ice cream at the end? And I says, can I have a spoon, please? He says, have you never tried eating it with chopsticks? So I ate it with chopsticks and it worked. So... There you go. You can eat ice cream with chopsticks. Uh, that's, that's my use, useless fact for today. <laughs> I've never well, been to uh, Ibiza, so uh, I'll have to give that one a miss, I think. Yeah, it's the one just at the end of the, the main drag um, before you go up the hill. A uh, lot of Chinese, opposite the German-Italian place. That's brilliant as well. I don't know if it's still there. I mean, I was... 27 years old when we went there, so it's never been shut down and fought over or anything like that. That's one of my favourite names. Can I, can I get it in here? I absolutely love this name. It's our good friend, Bollocky Buff. Bollocky Buff says, Merry Christmas, guys. Christmas Day with the family and pigs in blankets. It's kilted sausages, man. Christmas Day with the family and pigs in blankets. You got to be careful you get that the right way around. You don't get, get that family in blankets and Christmas Day with the pigs. <laughs> well, that's what they do down the <laughs> park. Sorry, I was miles away then. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, we were talking about pigs and blankets and that. And, and oh, having, yeah, we had dinner. Dinner. Yeah. having Christmas dinner with the family. And, and Mark saying, don't get it wrong way around. So you're having Christmas dinner with the pigs and having the family in blankets. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Like, you, can go back, you can go back to sleep now, Paul. Okay. Uh, having, having Christmas with the pigs in the blankets. <coughs> Have you had your medication today? Rewind. Have you had your medication today, uh, Paul? No, I have later. I've got medication later. Yeah, I've got it. All right. Did, did she administer that? Is she like your carer or something like? I've uh, not quite got to that stage yet. No, yeah. you still got all your faculties working in that. Yeah, just about. Right, right. You're not much older than me, though, are you? Don't you say you're younger? I'm younger. So many jokes. He's a, he's a liar. He's no younger. <laughs> I'm four years older than you. Oh, what is bulky buff saying? Right. The ex-wife was a sweaty, so she would say kilted sausages. Are you trying to infer that us Scottish people, as in jocks, as in Sweaty socks. Yeah. Cheers, Paul. Okay. Thank you. 
my ex-wife was a sway. That's a terrible thing to say. Or was she actually like had a body with a problem? Is that, is that why you're no longer why, why she's an ex? I don't know. Um doo -doo 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 -doo. Frankie says, I'm at work at Christmas. Oh, that's right. Are you if I remember rightly like, a long time ago, you're emergency services, Frankie, aren't you? You know, ambulances or something like that. I'm trying to remember. Because I'm sure once he, he sent us a picture that it was at his work testing all the flashing lights and that, and he wasn't supposed to be doing it. So he was like, shh. I'm pretty sure Frankie might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Frankie, but I think you're uh, on the ambulances. So he's at work at Christmas and got himself a Tammy Up Mazda Roadster kit for the stash. That sounds quite nice. And yes, he's in the, he's in the emergency services. So when we were talking about... Um, all right, Balky, I'll allow that comment. Fat, fat and sweaty, his ex was. That's the best way to have them, fat and sweaty. And and moist. I do, I do like the word moist. Make sure your women are fat, sweaty, and moist. Um, fart me away has retracted these messages. Have I still got a copy of them in here? Mm. Oh, he's got his sisters for Christmas. All ah, right, all right. So even though you withdrew them, I, I can still see what you wrote. <laughs> um, yeah, Bob stops, so he goes over to his sisters. Aye. Ah, right, right. Oh, I keep forgetting that's Bob because it's fucked my weight. Because it used to be Mr. Bobbington and then yeah. Bobbington. He's, he's thrown a curveball there. He's never, ever named himself uh, with anything that hasn't got Bob in the title. So that threw me. Yeah, it was a flag that, that gave it away. Pardon me. Um, yeah, so what's John laughing at? <laughs> sci fi fantasy. And my wife was my wife moist and gave the oo face. Funnily enough, a lot, a lot of women don't like the word moist. So when, when they're in and they see the advert, they're new from Andrex, moist um, wipes for doing your body and all that. The women think, I think moist is a brilliant word. More people should be moist. No? Okay. His wife watched it. And she said, moist. Okay, it's slightly damp and perished around the edges. Is that better? <laughs> oh, yeah. John, John's losing it now. As you usual, this, well, I mean, this, this channel is predominantly about uh, and obviously we're all model makers. It's about model making and sticking plastic together. And I'm, I'm playing my electricity. But we, we've talked, oh, we've not really talked about models tonight. We've talked about moist and what we're having for Christmas dinner and egg wives and, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was that? What, what were you saying there? Oh, sci-fi fantasy says she hates the word moist and panties. You should wear any. Well, I didn't use those two words in the same sentence, but just for your wife, sci-fi fantasy, I'll do this in a DJ voice. Hi, and welcome to Smooth FM tonight, where, yes, sci-fi fantasy's wife's panties are moist. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, well, there we have Frankie goes to Hollywood and to try to go to war. <laughs> right, sorry, I had to do that. Oh, dear, Terry. Uh, Bob hates the word tampax. Why? <laughs> I carry one in my handbag all the time. I, I carry uh, I've got them somewhere. I got them for a Christmas present uh, one year off of one of the guys. Um, I carry them in my man bag all the time in case I get a nosebleed because they're great. If you if, if you ever get a nosebleed that doesn't stop, stick a tampax up. Uh, and that'll, it, 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 well, you know how it would work if there's any ladies watching. They kind of swell up a little bit. But why in the adverts for ladies' sanitary things? Now, this is just going off at a total tangent. Why is it always blue water that they pour on? Oh, look, if it's your time of the month, all this blue, lovely, clear blue liquid. They don't show, like, all, like, the real clots and moistness and, and debauchery. It actually goes on. Why? Yeah. Well, have I went too far again? Right. <laughs> 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 Oh dear. Oh, what's here? Aries styrene's in. Oh, I like this one. Is it come up in this one? Oh no, it's not come up in this one yet. I was going to highlight it yet. Oh. There's a wee chat box in this program. 
Um, it takes a little bit to update from the actual YouTubes. That's why I popped out YouTube chat. And sometimes a comment comes up and I can click on it. Um, there we go. There he is. It takes just a wee second delay. There we go. From Aries Styrene, Merry Christmas, you crazy bastards. And all the best to you as well. Bye, Um I think sci-fi fantasy quite like that one, actually, my, my radio DJ. Yes, it's one of those moist evenings. Yeah, <laughs> keep your pennies on. So, yeah, uh, I better go off that subject. Or um, His wife's going to divorce him. So, yeah, yes. Uh, oh, that's that's right. Uh, Stuart Brenner works. He's, he's a, a train, not a train monkey, a train mechanic, grease monkey. He fixes all the trains and that. So he's off Christmas Day, but working Boxing Day night fixing trains and knowing our railways, he'll be busy. <coughs> on strike for a month. The what? I thought they were on strike for a month for railways. I haven't watched any news at all. I know that Boris Johnson, not, not, we're not going to politics, but he's like the mayor of Zimbabwe or something like and something about Trump's been impeached. Don't exactly know what that means. Does that mean he's no longer prime minister? Or, or, or oh, no, no, he, he's still president, but it means he's... Um, basically, impeachment is the posh term for taking somebody... If it was you and me, we'd be going to court. To get sued? You know, you'd be... Criminal, criminal proceedings. Ah, right, okay. But if he's president, it's impeachment. Ah, right. And if he gets convicted, does that mean he loses his presidency? Um, yeah, it could do. And he won't. <laughs> Get demoed. Right, anyway, yeah. So I went off a right tangent there. Um, right, so Merry Christmas, you crazy bastards. Um, yeah, here is Styrene's and... Fraser's on a work experience placement with the council, so you're out gritting. Are you, you're going to be shoveling grit off the back of a, a tipper. What sort of work, work experience is it? Plumbing, joining, electricity, or, or yeah. Work experience. Jimmy, how old are you, Fraser? You're just a young lad, aren't you? Uh, Stuart Bremer's going to be back in the mail, whatever a mo is. Uh, Sci-fi fantasy scene. It means nothing. He isn't going to lose his job. If it, it goes to Senate next, which is held by the Republicans, and they'll not impeach him. Oh, so it's just like a uh, Democrat. An <clears throat> internal investigation by other politicians type thing. Mm. Yeah, I guess I don't know, to be honest. Well, yeah. Mm. But yeah. I well, thought I was caught up in the news. I, I, I do. Oh, sorry, there you go. Now, I, I just thought it was uh, the equivalent of um, being um, prosecuted by but by his peers rather than... I, I really don't know yeah. that. It's just, it's just a strange thing. Um, oh, by the way, I don't know if any... This is just totally random. It was, it was something I, I caught up on tonight. Um, there's a couple down south that make some cracking funny YouTube videos, and they call themselves Lad Baby. I don't know if oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Now, last Christmas, they they had the comedy charity number one, uh, something about Greg Sausage Rolls. Yeah, yeah. And they proudly announced that Lad Baby are the Christmas number one this year with uh, I Love Sausage Rolls, done to the theme of I Love Sausage Rolls. Put well, another done it again. They have got Christmas number one this year. So I don't know. I doubt they'll watch this, but lad, baby, keep it up. Brilliant. And your message is mental. Um, so it's, lad, a husband, it's a husband and wife, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're brilliant. They're yeah. Really brilliant. He, he plays tricks on her. She'll say, go get something for the baby and you'll come back with some really weird. Um, I just find them hilarious. It just started off in a small YouTube thing. Yeah, they're quite, yeah, they're quite, uh, I didn't realise they were as big as they were. Oh, um, I I've been watching them for a while. 
she's she's really quite funny because the face she makes when he comes in with the thing that she's asked him to get and it's totally different it's it's kind of set up but it's really quite funny it's just my say the funniest one i ever seen them do she got him to do this thing by the side of the car that shark song that mama shark song ah and she's driving the long eye baby yeah, so. and, she's got him, and he doesn't want to do it but she's convinced him that he's got to do it for the kid and yeah. uh, <laughs> and then somebody comes along on a push bike about halfway along and you can see that he's looking over there's this guy that's uh doing this mama shark thing with a sharp plastic shark fin on his back yeah <laughs> Mind uh, there, was a, there was another um sort of viral thing where people would sort of be was it they would well obviously it started in america there's a lot of automa automatics and all that they used to open the door whilst the car was driving get out and do a dance beside it while they're walking along oh yeah 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 I've said, yeah I Fraser's just 19. I thought he was just a young lad. Uh, placement was the health service, uh, delivering medical furniture, commodities, etc. to people who need them. That's that's a job that's got to be done, mate. So yeah, cool. Are you enjoying it? I, I like I like old people, more old people. That's why I've got old people on here tonight. Um, you, Barry. What? I'm the youngest mm. here. You yeah, actually, um, you know, I hate to say it, you look a bit like, now, anybody ever watched Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer? He's a baby, he's a baby. Oh, you need a set of drums, mate. Georgie no. Dors. No, I, never, I don't, don't know that one. No, you never see it. What the score is Georgie Dors? No. Uh, I'm out of Little Britain. <coughs> oh, you mean. Is it Matt Lucas? Is that his name? Yeah. Matt Lucas. Lucas. He's a baby. Right, okay. It's lost. Yeah, you, you, you never watched Little Britain? Uh, no. No, no, I haven't. No, I, I know it's a popular program, but I've never seen it. I've never right. watched it. So that reference was totally lost on you then. <laughs> yeah. Frank, yeah. so. Even if we were to put you in a big nappy. No, it doesn't. In a big nappy, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, uh, so Fraser's 19 and yeah, with the health service deliver delivering medical furniture and that to people who need them, so I think that's excellent. Uh, Aries is saying he's just a huge brat, it's getting a spanking. Who's who's getting a spanking? Uh, oh, oh well, that, that's talking about Trump, obviously. Yeah, uh, sci fi fan is saying, Okay, boys, I have to take my son to meet his friends. When I get back, I'll check him still on. Great time watching it. Thanks for popping in, sci fi fantasy. Um, that's the one that Mark knows. Is that well, I don't know him. Let me just get that right. Um, I've spoken to him on his own channel, and I've spoken to him in our hangouts. But I, uh, I think Gordon knows him more than I do. Fellow model maker, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So he's a YouTube. He makes models on YouTube and does this thing where you can win prizes and. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's got got YouTube channel. Got his own YouTube channel and uh, Facebook page. He's also the owner of Hobby Link International. Yeah. Really? Uh, he's the owner. As well, yeah. He's he's owner of Hobby Link, and I've just been making really weird radio DJ noise panties things. Yeah. Just like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well done. Yeah, well, I won't be getting a job there then because she's probably on the HR department. That's that fucked. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> he quite funny, actually. He thought it was funny anyway. She was cringing, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, made, she made a mental note of your name. <laughs> yeah, uh, as long as he doesn't find my dress. But, uh, John, John will be on top of it tonight with his, his uh, big airbrush painting the big bulls <laughs> at the top of my roof. Oh, ain't that funny? So he's Hobby's own. All oh, right, okay. Not Hobby Zone, Hobby Link. Hobby Link, because there's a Hobby Link Japan, there's a Hobby Link UK, and they're right. the, there's a, they're the main importers of kits in the UK from Japan, are they not? Uh, I don't know. They, they import them in, and all the other companies get their stock from them. I, 
I might be wrong. I, 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 don't know. I don't know. I really don't know, Terry, whether... Um, I know he's got a magazine. Um, he's doing some sci-fi books at the minute. So yeah, he's, he's, he's got so many things that he's involved with. I know that he, that he does quite a lot. Um, and he's a really down to earth guy. He's a really nice guy. He's just and, a dollar, um, really. Yeah, I don't, um, not very often I'll, I'll give uh, away like free plugs to other people, but I'll, yeah, you know, he's well worth going to see. He sounds a good laugh and he's on my, my wavelength, especially when I said moist and then he said, yeah, like that, or panties, and then yeah, it just it goes out of control here pretty quickly. And it's usually all John's fault. <laughs> you mean Doris John's in chat? Yes, I just oh, don't know. Here's your bird, her, her, her situation. How you doing, John? He's going, have a good one, everyone. I think he's out. Yeah, he did that. He's chucking the arrows and that. But the pound again is to go to know. Oh, there, John. He's, he's watching from the clubhouse. Watching who? He's watching from the clubhouse. What clubhouse? Uh, translator to L1, please. Translator to L1. Oh, oh, uh, golf. No. He's doing it from the clubhouse, so he's probably out to rave. Oh, like a minus club. Yeah, oh, something like that. Ah, oh, 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 right, okay. No, John, yeah. John's kind of a nice bloke. Oh, oh, yeah. Top fella, John. He, he, he likes the push you, and I brought the push you at him and going, oh, it's got it and doing all the IS and all that. And, um, and he, he, frosted he, lucky he, charm. he calls me a Welsh twat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does he? I, I do all yeah. the jokes about the Irish and he calls me a Welsh twat. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, this is coming up in the chat. Right. Oh, I, can I find it? Can I find it? Oh, come on. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's not popped up yet. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. Here he stays in. <laughs> he got his wife to do something at the side of the car. <laughs> oh, no one videoed it. <laughs> Get Bob to have a look for it. <laughs> Should we go any deeper? Or were you already going deeper? <laughs> Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a while. Um. Uh, oh, you are all just chatting away. We've got a couple of spanners on tonight, so if anybody does misbehave, they will undo your nuts and you will fall apart. Um. Bobington's going. What? Um, all right. I right, my chats. For some reason, it's taking a little bit to catch up. It must be for the phone broadband. Um, That's it. I'm not. You what? I've had enough of that kit. I told you that's that's as far as it gets. I I bring it out. I look at it for half an hour, and then I think, oh, God, have I really got to build this? Well, not you're talking about something else. We said you pull out. You look at it for half an hour, and then you put it away again. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a glowing endorsement for a kit, is it really? Is it Ravel? Yeah. Mm. What, what puts you off it? Is it the amount of detail painting, or does it not fit very well? It's um, well, for a start, I'm not a big fan of trains. Um, ah, I like that. Angela picked this kit. She wanted this kit. I was going to build it for her, and um, she could display it. Ah. I'm not a fan of trains. Um, the fact that it comes in black plastic and it... You want to paint it black, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it's so... It's everything I dislike about trains wrapped in a, in a modelling package. It's... I've always liked trains. I mean, as, as a young lad, I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to uh, say that train spotters are boring or anything like that, but I would say train spotting was boring. But having a model railway set, I I can see that because uh, when I was at primary school, um, a friend of mine from a well-off family had his whole loft converted, 
and had all the the Gordon out and all the Hornby trained and they, they, they do a lot of the diorama stuff like what us guys try and do with the modeling and stuff so there's yeah. that um, yeah, that's different. You're you're building something that's going to move. You've got some features here. This yeah. is just a static. But I I like the look at the steam trains. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy that had a series on telly. He was a steeplejack. An old guy. He's passed away now. Fred and he, Dibner. Fred Dibner. Used to love watching these things. An uncle of mine took me down to the railway museum at York when I was probably about. 12. I absolutely loved York Museum. All the big, you know, and when the Flying Scotsman comes up fast, I go down to South Queensbury to watch it going across the fourth bridge. Uh, I love them. See, we get the we get the big trains come through Northampton, the old ones. Um, you you can you whenever they come through, there's a queue of people um, stand along the Grand Union Canal. Because we've got one of these um, railway train bridges. Is it called a viaduct? The big bridges yeah, that fly on yeah, the... aqueducts, water viaducts is usually trains, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so we've got this huge, it's right up high, and you can go down to the canal and you can see the train coming and it goes along yeah. the, um, the the top of this these bridges and you've got full view of it. Oh, that'd be cracking. Whenever anything big comes through um i can't remember the names of the trains but when they come through there is a queue of people on push bikes that are just positioned along the canal with their cameras and they're just sat there and we go to, we take that route down to morrison's mm -hmm. um and and there's just loads of people sat so you know that something's coming through and it comes through and you get all the steam and you whoop, whoop, and they all go, <laughs> you know if, if you want to take a nice scenic picture and it's a, a quite a lovely landscape with a big uh, viaduct and then a steam train going over the top that would make a cracking actual just a photographic picture on its own yeah you know, maybe but the thing is everybody's done them mm. so i mean uh, i've done a lot of photography over the years um and I, I i you know because of now my disability and that there's very limited places i can go so i photograph the hell out of everything within a mile radius of my house and that includes the viaduct but what um, about um like like macro stuff like wildlife and insects oh yeah i've done all that i've done all that i've got loads of pictures of macro i've got my friend's yeah. daughter's doing a photography course at the moment. She's yeah. really in there. She's just a young lass. I, I like photography, but all this exposure thing and that, I'm not all that clued up on it. I've got an idea how it works, but I've not got an eye for it. I you know? I done I done a lot of photography and what killed it for me was going professional. Um mm. I went professional, I I've done weddings, I photographed at special events and stuff like that and it totally killed it for me um and now i haven't taken any photographs in about we're talking years now um, so here's, here's an interesting one on a similar vein obviously turning your hobby into your job makes yeah it such a hobby although some people enjoy it um yeah some people do uh, a, a classic one a guy i like watching on youtube uh the mad australian bloke dave for ev blog now it started off a hobby and he's worked in electronics all his life but now all he does is youtubes and gets an income from that and he makes products and sells products and designs products and makes an income for that but it's kind of hobby and job yeah it works for him there and it's a bit when you when you um, a bit like the live streams it's model making it's your hobby but I suppose that this is why I don't know where do I go back onto Saturday things because then it kind of turns into a little bit like a job where you have to yeah. turn up on Saturday um, to do a live stream. But if, if people are turning up and enjoying it, I will maybe go back to doing it again. Yeah, I think I think when we're like this, when there's a group of us, mm -hmm. um, and and it's it's more fun. Um, you, we're you not. Know, Schedule. You can bounce off each other. You have a laugh, um, but when 
for example, when I was doing my, I used to do a Wednesday night show, um, mm -hmm. and that was just me. I'd be quite that, that that wasn't fun in the end. I, I yeah. didn't enjoy that in the end, and it was just a drag, and um, it was starting yeah, to ruin that. the hobby for me. So I just knocked it on the head. Yeah, I was going to say if you'd done it in drag, that would that would be cool if you put those in. Yeah, if you've done it in drag, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you get some funny looks. And plus, Angela's like size fourteen, and I'm I'm big size. You got a big chap, and I'm I've got a big belly. You know, it was just when you said we all bounce off each other. I thought if we all lined up yeah. and ran at each other, we'd all just go. Oh, I'll I, I tell you what sort of size I am. I went into a shop the other day. <laughs> And I managed to put on a jumper, and it was 4XL, and it fit. And I was like, yes! Well, I, a lot of stuff that I wear, especially in biker gear, is 4XL. Um, but but T-shirts and that, I'm um, 2XL and 3XL in my T-shirts. I'm five. I'm a, I'm a big chap. I'm five. But I'm a big woman as well, um, and she had poor mobility. A bit like yourself, obviously, she didn't have any limbs missing or anything, but... Um, when you've got mobility issues, you can't get about as well to burn the calories off. And I, I put on three stone uh, due to medication I was on, increasing my appetite. Yeah. And once it's on, um, if you're not keeping yourself mobile, I mean, I, I don't have any physical disabilities like what you guys have got, but I'm living quite a sedentary life at the moment. So I'm not, oh, let's go for a, a three mile walk and all that. It's, I can't be asked. I'm sitting on my chair and I'm sticking plastic together. That's my problem. But once you put the weight on, if you've got a sedentary lifestyle and you can't get yourself mobile, you're not going to shift. Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, I've got, I, I, I've got sort of various illnesses. Um, I got out of breath eating a sandwich the other day. I, I'm actually getting out of breath going upstairs now. And yeah, it's that, it's that bad. And and the thing is, you can't. It's a catch twenty two situation because you need to, you need to um, do more exercise in order to lose the weight. But you can't do the exercise because of other limiting factors, heart problems, um, problems. There's so many. Get, um, what what are supposed to be a really good therapy? Do you not get hydrotherapy or anything like that? You know, because no, yeah, a, lot, a lot of areas get better services than we get. Um, but because North, Northampton's chronically um, the, the the council here basically have been a little bit corrupt and yeah. they spent all the money and millions of pounds went missing and it's a big thing around here all right so i'm quite lucky in scotland that um and i know people all take the mic out of the snp and that our, our health service up here does have its problems but um we don't seem to have half the problems that you guys have down south Oh, somebody else, somebody else is in that I've not seen for a little while. Osric 9000 is in. Good evening, chaps. How are you doing, Osric? Who's that? Osric 9000. I don't know that name. Not oh, that I've yeah. heard of. Uh, common visitor. Common? Yes, yeah, there's one riffraff. Uh, common visitor on the channel. But in, uh, it's just some names. Um, I seem to have a memory for names. Um, who used to come on the channel and used to do regular <laughs> live. Stuart Bremner saying he fixes trains and can't stand them. I'm not on about modern locomotives. I like the age of steam. I find that very fascinating. You know that all the all the Victorian engineering. I like all that kind of stuff. I thought for a minute there, Osric Nine Thousand had said good evening, chips. Chips? Are you feeling hungry? Because <laughs> you know. You just you'd be talking away the next minute, it's like sausage, eggs, beans, toast, mm, yum, 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 yum. Yeah, where was I? Good evening. Um, yeah. So yeah, what, <laughs> we've got steady numbers on tonight. It's quite good. Looks like about nineteen folk watching. It's I, I wasn't even expecting that. I mean, back in the days when there was a whole pile of us on and we we're on every single Saturday night, and people knew. That there was a regular show and you were up in the 30s and 50s and that and i thought oh, well won't you just try it and put feelers out as i say we're just trying this new steam yard program because youtube changed everything and didn't link in although the hangouts is still a thing the the google hangouts is still a thing it just doesn't link up with youtube anymore 
Unless you can't go live with it anymore. Unless you use third party programs to do it. Um, so it's going nice to see you back in camera, Mr. Smith. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm looking a bit sort of, I think it's the right time of year to have the old Santa beard going. Yeah, back in camera with ultra wide angle. Right, Tracks, yeah. Ultra <laughs> wide, I'll, I'll go ultra wide angle for you. Here we go, here we go. Oh, God. Yeah, but so there you go. <laughs> it's yeah. really freaky looking at the YouTube um, feed while listening to the proper feed. Because then your lips are not synced with what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, nothing synced up. Oh, uh, I because you must have been watching the YouTube one and you're, you're trying to show whatever it was your train you were showing, but you were watching the YouTube thing, so you'd move something and five seconds later it would it would go in. Yeah. Right. yeah. You've been you've been quiet there, Paul. Have you fell asleep? No, I've been doing a bit of modeling, believe it or not. <laughs> what, what plastic modeling? Yeah. What what are you doing your boat? I'm doing my boat. You need to get yourself a desk camera. Yeah, I know I do. Just get a long... You could have your PC where it is, but just get a USB extension and get one of these wee Logitech cameras. Yeah. Stick it above your bench. I've... Or get an array of mirrors. Oh, I have a wait a minute. An array? Ooh. Yeah. You know, like a submarine that does all, it's got them all at different angles. You like can have a, a room full of mirrors. A stingray or an array? That's yeah. in the other room, Mark. That's a what? That's in the other room. Oh, oh right. I'm asking about you and sexes, nocturnal bedroom gymnastic things. Yeah. That's in the other room with your sex swing. That's it, Mark. Yeah. Is what? <laughs> Uh, is that that Anne Summers one that's got like the big, you shackle it to a big H beam in the ceiling and the straps come down and your partner's suspended, you can do what you want with them? Yeah, it's going oh, on. Uh, <laughs> big picture I've, of a I've red. Got, not got a clue what he's on about. I've never seen one. Big picture of a red tractor on the back wall. Yeah. With Sue in her Wellington boots going, Massey Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a bike at the Scottish Bike Show. Um, it was a Harley, right? But it's done up in Massey Ferguson colours. And instead of Harley Davidson, it had Massey Davidson. <laughs> it was done really well. I pissed it because we all call Harley's tractors up here. So, yeah. Um, what's Fraser saying? I've let my hair go myself. If I had my hair all down, I'd look like cousin. Cousin yeah. it? Yeah, I've let my hair go. <laughs> What did I can't, can't let you <laughs> uh, Do you use the same polish that the um, the snooker people use? For it, it gets in my eyes. Yeah, I have to keep brushing it out my eyes. <clears throat> which one? <laughs> which, which which eye? <laughs> Aye, yeah, it's, like, it's got like one really long eyebrow, like one screen wipers that hang down. If you grow okay. your eyebrow, really long you could have like eyebrow massage yeah my eyebrows have got i've got more hair on my eyebrows than i've got on my head it's longer it is actually longer oh you have got oh you have got a bit so if you grew it and grew it really long you could have a ponytail or something who is it was it michael hesseltine that had the really long spitting image like bushes yeah that's right. Or, uh, Dennis Healy was another famous one, wasn't he? Dennis Healy, yeah. eyebrows, that's what I used to get called. Uh, yeah. It's turning into a monobrow now. That's old age. You, you get hair in strange places as you get older. Fraser's going to send you a picture of your hair. Okay, as long as it's just stuff in your head, mate, I'm fine with that. Um, Bob, keep... Oh, but he's changed his name again. He's now Seymour Bobs. Seymour <laughs> Bobs. Hi, Seymour. 
So, yeah, what do you guys in the chat want to have a little blather about? Just pop in your comments. Done not bad. How long have we been on? Been on for just over an hour. So it's quite quarter past ten um, here in the UK. Have to I have to go to the toilet. I will be back in a minute. There's his biggest fan. Yeah, that's my biggest fan. There's your biggest fan. I'll just mute you then, Mark, will I? Yeah. No yeah, bother. I don't want to hear your ablutions. <laughs> oh, something just went ping. Ah, uh, oh, that's Fraser sent me. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, can I? Am I able to share that? <laughs> Let's see if. Yeah, will it let me? Mm. Might as well test this program out. So I got in that one. You've done it now, Fraser. Oh, no, it doesn't let me. Or does it? Was it let me? Is it pulling it up? There we go. That's what Fraser Green just said, and that's what his hair's like. <laughs> that's <laughs> mental. Absolutely mental. Right, stop screen sharing. There we go. I just thought I, would, just thought I would try that out. Yeah, yeah actually, actually, yeah. we haven't seen what John's building yet. You got the mark, we call it by John. Is it Bear and John? Yeah. Oh, but we actually had a wee chat before the show started. You, you said you just want to go with Lord, unless you particularly want to show anybody what you've been up to, John. Right, let's click on John. Uh, looks like a combine harvester, is it? Right, it's a jet plane. It's the um, Omni Boss 176 scale Tomcat. Top, nice. Was that the one that was in Top Gun? Yeah. That's nice. I like all the pre shading and all that stuff that you do on your hairy planes. Very nice. And is that its enemy? Yeah, it's, uh, the, uh, it's the mid 25 we've been doing in the group build. See, I haven't been keeping up with anything. Oh, I like that. I'm not into fast jets myself, but I do like that. If you stop moving it about so quick, it might be able to focus on it. There's some nice detail with oh, all the, the different streaking and stuff. That's cool. I do, I do like that. I do like Russian stuff. It's kind of like angry looking. Right, what, what's this? You were on about this when you showed me this the first time the other day, this pilot. What, what's the joke about the pilot? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I came up with the idea I was going to do a bit of a dio board, and then everybody did them. So I decided to put a pilot in because nobody else had done that. Oh, right. Okay, so it didn't come with one. No. Right, Mark, you're back on, mate. I unmuted yeah. you. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that um, John uh, Terry there, when he said he was going to mute me while I went to the toilet, I don't want people actually thinking that I just literally unzip my fly and just wee all over the floor where I'm at. <laughs> Fraser just, just dropped a commode off at your house. Because you said, uh, we don't want to hear your ablutions. <laughs> I'm thinking, I went to the toilet and then I'm thinking to myself, hold on a minute. People are going to think that I've, I've just literally swiveled around in the chair and um yeah but but see the thing is when i go to the toilet see when you do a ghosty it doesn't make any noise but if you do a big torpedo as you hear the big thrudunk <laughs> no, have you ever done a ghosty you know what i mean by a ghosty you sit uh, in the toilet you know you've squeezed one out but when you looked in the pan there's nothing there it's because it's still stuck to the back of your no, it, 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 it's doing right down, right down the U-Bain, the ghost day. It's still it, stuck in your arse cheeks, that's why. And you get the ball roll out, it's like, 
Yeah. And then you spend the rest of the day wondering what that funny smell is. Yeah, and what, why do you feel a bit mm, uncomfortable? Yeah, the large cigar hanging from your your rear bottom. <laughs> John was trying to show us these planes there. I'd, a lot of nice comments coming up about your jet there. Um, very nice work, John Bollockybuff says. Love that mig. And uh, Frankie likes it as well. Good job on the Jets. And Audric likes it as well. You're good with your planes, mate. I'll give you that. I've got a MIG as well. So you said, all, are you all building the same? Hold on, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, as good as, um, not quite as good as John's. Um, mine was... Uh, so this was a group build that we were doing on the Sprue Surgery Waiting Room channel. Um and we were all building MiG 25s. Um, unfortunately, the dogs jumped on mine. Oh. Uh, the um, this piece is missing off of this side now. Funny enough, I just seen John repairing one of his aircraft earlier on. That that exact same thing had broken off of something. So that's um, mine. He made that kit then he's all building the exact same kit. Yeah, yeah, MiG-25. We were all building either oh, the I, I, or who? the Rebel. Is it the Rebel one? Right, okay. Yeah, um, the RCM boxing, weren't it? Yeah. The Rebel boxing, the RCM kit. I had lighting on mine, so uh, I'd got some LEDs in there. You can just see them down the bottom. Yeah, the bonus. yeah. Um, I'd got some LEDs in the cockpit, and I'd got two LEDs where the down where the lamps are on the bottom All right, yeah, yeah. Um, and that basically sat on this oh, oh you showed that i like that which is uh, yeah so it sat on that and basically uh so the if i can just get it to drop it the the plane sort of sat like that yeah and the the, the wake in the water is obviously from yeah after burners on and going yeah <clears throat> and that oh, was yeah. the switch to turn the lights on and off mm -hmm. um and yeah that was so that's still a work in progress then is it or is it no i finished so, um and uh it was too heavy to hang Oh right! Uh, oh, you were going to hang on the wall. I I got some bloody great big nails to put in the wall, but it's that is heavy. Um, right, all I, it isn't. Is, is yours a timber frame house? Is it? <laughs> yeah. You you would have had to actually put wood buttons in between the studs and then mount it. Yeah, it's a bit of a faff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and that's um yeah that was mine that's why it's got no wheels that's why the wheels are up on it that is mine. oh hold on paul what's oh my... <laughs> well you're doing one as well so yeah. oh, i i haven't caught up with the guys for months so they've all been doing this mig 25 build it's actually a very nice looking plane these mig 25s i like them yeah, man. icm kit very nice You've you've got a big is that an extra fuel tank underneath that? Is that a long range one? Yeah, I don't know nothing about airplanes. So, yeah. Or or is that just one of your wife's toys that got stuck to it a bit chewing them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I let her know that. Oh shit. She'll beat me up. I think his wife's toys are bigger than that. Oh, well, hold on, John Scott. What have you got out? We're actually doing some I like that. Oh, uh, no idea what it is. It's a, it's, a <laughs> it's a Ford Escort, Terry. That. All oh, right, RS two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Is it an Israeli jet? Is it what, what? What is it? I know nothing it, about jets. It's an American F sixteen aggressor. All um, right. Okay. I knocked the uh, pito tube off it. Of <laughs> another one back on. I know what a pito tube is. You spent ages on that, as I recall. Is that the one you spent absolutely months on? Yeah. A PO tube is for the airspeed indicator. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Yay! I know something about planes. This is this is the one Mark's on about. Oh right. So this is the one. You, whenever I saw you, you'd got this in your hands. We've actually got somebody going hello from Moscow. Mig thirty one is the best. Nick Godlove, welcome to the channel. Aha, uh -huh. Nick, we're drinking your we're drinking your Mr. I I might have some left as well, yeah. <laughs> John's got a plane and we've all got bottles of Russian stand yeah. yes. We're we're all Russians at heart. Yeah, this this, this is the one Mark was on about. Oh yeah. like, Sharp's mouth approved. Look at that. Yeah. Sharp mouth, sharp's mouth approved. That's nice. That's quite a complicated camel pattern on that, actually. Uh, you would not believe how. Uh, I mean, he was painting that every night for weeks. Well, you just you just see him with his optivisor on. I remember yeah. just, his optivisor and he's just sitting at the bench going. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah. And we'd often say, "Have you not finished that yet?" And he'd go, "No, no, still got some, still got some touching up to do." I think he was touching it up for about well, doing a Jimmy Savile on it. <laughs> you said that just as I took a sip of my drink, you bugger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doing a Jimmy Sample on it. Yeah. What else did you do? That one off as well when Mark did his MiG 21. Oh, yeah, mine's. Um... So, what was that? MiG 21. Oh, the 21. I think I might have bought one of them when I was younger. I remember the, 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 the nose piece having a wee eye. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've done a 21 in my younger days. Uh, that was mine. Oh. Same one that Gordon's just done. But, oh, uh, so he's been doing lots of hairy planes and there's various different camo schemes. I can't show you the bottom of mine because the wheels have fallen off. That seems to be a common theme with yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> it's, it's a bit like Paul's tractor. You know, he drives along and he gets back ten years and the fact wheel falls off. Yeah, the wheels fall yeah. off. The wheels always fall off. <laughs> oh dear. Right, I'm just gonna quickly catch up and chat because it really, it looks like we've got a Russian a Russian gentleman in. Um right, let's see where did where do we get up to? Um What's Bob saying? Found that video. Was it on a bus? Oh, oh, I missed that question for Frankie. Goes to Hollywood. Are you going to catch up in the cave tonight? I might try. Um, I haven't tried. I'll need to be a Scottish screenshot. I'll give it a go. I might do a quick review of what's in the cave. Um, because I did see you posted some stuff up that Coca Cola truck and that that you're doing. So yeah, that's an idea. Um, might do a little cave review. Good thing is, is with this particular program. I can do the cave review, and you can still see the three us in the side loves to do that. So that's that's an idea. I might do a little cave review. Uh, Osric's going, oh, that's nice. <clears throat> Bob's giving it flash get, John. Obviously, Nick Dorloff, new to the channel, is uh, hello from Moscow. MiG-31, I have no idea what MiG-31 looks like. Uh, it'll be an aeroplane. Uh, Frank from Hollywood saying that's cool, Mark. Uh, Sorry. Frankie was saying that's cool, Mark, obviously, when you were showing your aeroplanes. Aeroplane? Yeah, you were showing your aeroplanes a minute ago. I'm just catching up with chat. Uh, Frankie's saying he likes the open canopy to see the pilot. That would have been John's one, I think. Um, Audric's saying Russian planes are better looking than anyone else's. I think the look Russian military stuff's just, like, really aggressive looking. I do like it. Agriculture. Well, that's, that's, that, that's the next project. Right, I've only got that one, John. What is it? What is it? Is it the same plane? No, it's an SU-35. Someone just got a The flanker. Oh, the flanker. All right, all right. Yeah, that's the next one. That's an interesting camel pattern on that one. Yeah. Is that the one John's just done? No, it's no. Next. John, no. Irish, Irish John built a 70 second scale F-16 
Yeah, that was it. Yeah. In the Arctic, um, yeah. the winter camouflage. Yeah, it did a very good job of it as well. Yeah. Is it, is it Arctic Splinter or something they call it, isn't it? Yeah. I think I'm going to put some pictures up on the. I stick some on because um, I think he was saying uh, I might as well try it, Frankie, to see because I used to do that on a Saturday night live. We would sit and chat and have a giggle for a little while, and then we would go into the cave and see what everybody's been up to. But just in case anybody's feeling a bit peckish, look what I've got: Tonix caramel wafers. <laughs> Sorry, I like I like Tonix caramel. So I'll just quickly catch up chat. So yeah, I think cool. there you go. that's diabetes in a tin, mate. Oh, oh, that green one. I used to love to be see the wee round toffee ones. You're not allowed them though if you're diabetic. Oh no, I'm not. I'll give you my address, Mark. You can send it up to me. I'll just. No, no. I have to have them in case my sugar goes low. All oh, right. That's his excuse, and he's sticking to it. Yeah, I, I would be eating like three of them, and then one more metformin tablets, and then another three of them, and then another metformin. <laughs> if, if if my sugar goes low, then I have to open the tin. Oh God! Oh, what a life! Yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to get the chart um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Or of course, I could open the other two. Oh, oh, celebrations! Oh, they're good. Well, maybe I should just stick with the roses. I was going to say, I was waiting on the roses. What the hell? I have got no. I've I've stopped eating sweeties. I've, I'm a bit more on the biscuits instead of sweeties because I. I am good. actually. I'm diabetic. And these are they, everyone's bought me these. Everybody knows I'm diabetic. They're not trying to say something, Mark, are they? No. <laughs> uh, they're trying to induce you into a diabetic coma. Just remember to tilt your camera back up so we don't have to look at your smoo all night. Yeah. Right. Uh, catch up with the chat again. Uh, da -da -da -da. Fraser's gone. Terry finished with Space Marines and the Razorback. Razorback's finished. It's actually on. It's on YouTube. Is it finished? Or oh, did they put it on YouTube? It might be on YouTube. But it might be on Instagram. But yeah, the, the Razorback's finished. Uh, Space Marines. No, I've done nothing since December last year. Everything is still sitting there exactly where it was a year ago, uh, covered in dust which is why I was on one of my last live feeds. Everything's covered in dust, so it's all dust funny. So I'll need to pick up each individual piece and blow it off their line and hoover it. And Yeah, so... It's difficult to get back into that, though. Once you've... All right, I appreciate that um, you'll know this more than anyone, Terry, that when, you, when you've left it, it's difficult to get that interest back. It's the second time I've taken a year out. Um, that's part of the reason that my Z250 has taken three years to build, because I've only really been modelling for about a year since I came back. I did a few months and then took a year out. Did about a year, took a year out. <laughs> and it is hard to pick up, because you get into a flow yeah. when you're actually doing a kit and then trying to pick up where you left off get all the dust off it and get motivated again but i've yeah, got eight kits at the moment that are in partial stages of build uh one i feel quite bad about it's actually a motorcycle uh cbx 1100 the blackbird that my friend davy uh, gave me bugger off with your rz <laughs> oh i should actually put that guy on to you john it was uh, his dad has got a RD350 LC in that color, right? And he actually asked me if I would do a commission build. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's got the belly pan or a or a fair on that wasn't really UK spec. Um, and he asked me if if I could or he knew of anyone that could build one for his dad. But I says the pitfalls of commission builds and. I should have put them on to you. Mm -hmm. 
You see oh. that Suzuki you just showed there? Yamaha. Oh, is it Yamaha? I've got a oh, yeah. Suzuki with them colours. 350 kettle. RD350 LC, it's what I learned on. It's what I had my motorbike accident on. Was it? Yeah. Was it good at bring ding ding? Ah! You're doing crazy frog down the road. No, no, no. <laughs> bring ding 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 ding. <laughs> oh, so you came off on one. Yeah, the, 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 when I look at the bike that I've got now, the 750, which is obviously more powerful. And I've got a big fat tire on the back of it. It's probably about as wide as a car tire. And then you look at the RD350 LC and the tire's like a bicycle. Bicycle tire. It's but you can still fling them about. Um Fraser disagrees with Audric. He says the Yanks have the best looking planes, the American planes. No, Russians. I I've got to guess to say the Russians are that's my personal opinion. I, th I think they're MIGs, the SUs, oh, they're beautiful colours on them. Um, See, I just like drop propeller planes. I've not, I do like the ones you've built, but they don't float my boat. I like things with propellers on. Uh, Audric said, oh, a flanker, lovely. Uh, Fraser's going, the Blackbird's better. Now, there was somebody that built a Blackbird, and it's a hellish cut, seemingly. The Blackbird, that's the... Now, is, it black. is it that one that leaks like a sieve until it's... Yeah, the, yeah. They've got yeah. to keep fuel pumping through it while it's on the ground, because mm -hmm. it just literally, and I've seen videos of this, it literally just pours out as quick mm -hmm. as they can it it just pours out and then they disconnect the pipe send it off down the runway and once it reaches altitude then the panels all seal. Mm -hmm. yeah i watched um, that program it was quite quite interesting and it, you, you think that's quite frightening all that fuel leaking everywhere well let's think of it in another way uh formula one racing cars if if you went to a formula one racing car and didn't preheat the engine it's actually seized at room temperature they have to heat it up for the bores to expand enough to allow because the tolerances are so close to allow the pistons to move up and down yeah but that's kind of the opposite because it's getting exposed to external pressures they have to leave gaps so that when the pressure's on it when it's at high altitude it closes all the gaps up yeah that's, that's well, clever I think, yeah. I, I think I, I also in the same program it said that they use like three quarters of their fuel just getting up to altitude. Mm. Mental. Yeah. Um, Nick Russian guy says to Fraser in combat aircraft the main thing is not beauty. Mm. Yes, it's all about maneuverability and everything. Um. I don't know, I don't like where this is going. Yeah, the Warthog's a great thing. Ugly, but able to delete anything it fires at. Uh, Bjorn's in, Rat, Brat, Rat Pack. Uh, here's Santa and his little helpers, I see. Ho, 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 ho. Bah humbug, you bastard. <laughs> uh, how's it going? I've done a bike not long ago. We're meant to go in the garbage because of missing parts, but I managed it, managed it and it ended up quite nice. Oh, because you usually do... Um, those articulated Japanese mechanized robot things, don't you? Mm. The word that shall not be spoken. <laughs> Gundams. Yeah. Bjorn likes his Gundams. Right, I might have a... I'll see if I can get it working. See if I can pull up um, Smooth Cave. Close that. Uh, that picture of the freezer green was quite funny. Moose cave, clip in there. And I'll have a quick look to see what people have posted up before I start scrolling through. <coughs> do -do 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 -do. Oh, oh, wow. Right, okay. I can see what moving up oh oh right there's a few you're supposed to step up oh and 
my friend from down under, Johnny Blythe, doing a cracking. Um, it's like a jungle type diorama thing. I like how you're progressing that. Right, I'm going to try. I haven't done it with this particular um, program before. I'm going to try and look at. Now, Mark's got a group. Is are you still got your? Is your group still public, Mark? Yeah. And yours is uh, Spruce Surgery, isn't it? Yeah, Spruce Surgery Waiting Room. Right. So Mark, Mark's got one called the Spruce Surgery Waiting Room, uh, which is model making related. You're free to join and everything. Um, Mark, it's open to everybody, isn't it? Uh, you'll have to uh, join and be accepted, but as long right. as you fill in, the, fill in the things, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. I'll do the same. You, you, have, you have to sort of apply and say, where did you hear about the page and uh, do you make models? And you do, do you realise this isn't about Smooth Cave up in <laughs> Durness yeah. and all that? I get quite a, people, a lot of people see my Smooth Cave viewpoints like, and uh, they come in and go, and then you get an answer message going, this has got fuck all day with Smooth Cave. I'm like, it's a model page. Right, let's see if I can get it working. It'll be interesting to see because I haven't tried it with this particular. Um, John's asking, do links work here? No, I have not enabled links uh, for, for viewers in chat. Uh, only um, admins and myself can post links in the chat. That saves somebody coming on. There's a lot of people now uh, that troll live feeds and spam the chat with links and stuff. Uh, which is why I don't allow it. So it saves uh, the spam sort of trolls coming in and going, blah, 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 come to my site and blah, 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 and all that site popping up in your, in your chat feed. Right. Can I see if I can get this working? Right. So that's that. Um, do, 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 oh, God. Right. Bear with me because this is a new program and I haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. I have practiced it offline with the guys. So I'm going to go on share screen. Now, on the old way of doing it, when I shared screen, it blanked everybody out. You could only see me. But this one, it should pop us all down one side. And right, and then we should have Smooth Cave sitting on there. Right. OK, hopefully that's working. So I've actually got to go on another page to. That's me showing John. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Right. Frank, my my German friend, uh, built this off a while ago and he put LED lights in, and he's calling this one. Uh, he's got a little diorama. He's calling this one driving home for Christmas. He's he's done a little snow scene with a. Ooh, I like that. Now, I'll just come into Streamyard. I think I can blow up a bigger size for you guys to see. That is nice. It takes us all off. So that's the VW Golf that he built yeah. on 24 scale that he put um, lights and everything on, LEDs and that in it. And he's done a little snow scene. I like that. So it's very, yeah. very Christmas. Like the moon in the, the, the background, the deer there um, in the headlights. Uh, Wow, this is amazing. I like this. I like that. That's, that's, that's really, really yeah. quite clever. Now, obviously, I'm over, um, over on um, looking at the cave page and trying to juggle this. I might get behind in the chat. So if anybody wants to read out anything in the chat, if somebody comes up with something, uh, somebody keep an eye in the chat for me because I'm yeah. I'll so take care of that. Toggling uh, so many screens. So that, that's Frank. Frank, he goes to Hobbywood. Yeah. He says thank you guys for that. That is that is amazing, Frankie. That's, that's beautiful. I yeah. do. I absolutely love that. Yeah, that's brilliant. That Obviously, is, the um, picture is a little bit grainy, but it actually looks like it's quite funny. You wouldn't think you would think that was a real car, and but it's it's like a you could make Christmas cards out of that. Clever. Yeah, that's yeah. Absolutely Excellent. stunning. So uh, we've got a, one here for Stephen Potter, or one of my patrons. Cheers, Steve, for um, sticking with me through the year on Patreon. Um, his latest finished build, it only took him three years. Uh, 
Airfix 124 scale Hawker Typhoon. He made a mistake with one of the fuselage roundels. Too big, should have been smaller. So I think he's possibly hand painted it. Uh, the invasion stripes shouldn't really be on, but it's my kit and I wanted to put them on. Absolutely loved the build and now want a 124 scale mosquito. So I love this. Shark's mouth approved. Yeah. Can, can uh, we say them can we say them bigger? Sorry? Can we say them bigger? Um I can take us out of it and do it like that. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that blue, the blue on the front. I like the blue nose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I yeah. think John, John was telling me this is actually quite a big model, this. Yeah, it is, yeah. I, I can see all the, I'm just looking at that. Obviously, my picture's maybe a bit clearer than what you're seeing, but if I'm look, it's it's like what John would do. Looking at all the individual panels, it's got all um, the shades and stuff yeah, like that. Rat Pack, um, we will. Uh, he's got some bikes he's just put in if you refresh, but uh, we'll do that when we get further down. Yeah, once we get to the bottom, we'll refresh yeah. and see what the new stuff is. Yeah, excellent. Cheers for that, Mark. That's cracking. Well, the, all the gun um, uh, ammunition flaps open on the wings and that. I love yeah. that. It was a big, uh, this kit came out a few years back. It was a big seller for Airfix. It was one of their best um, kits by far, wasn't it? It was a huge. Yeah. That's 124 scale, is that right? Yeah. yeah. They, re they retooled the fuselage as well to make the early version, the car door version of it as well. What sort of money's not kept that size? About 100 it, quid. Oh, it really? was expensive when it came out. I can see all the fade. I can see why it took him so long. He's done a lot of work on the fading. So yeah, Stephen Potter's one of my my Patriot buddies. I like that. I like the blue nose. It's got a, a nice contrast with the rest of the, the greens and browns and mottled browns and yeah. Yes, Fraser Green. Uh, white would be a good colour. Oh, yeah. very he's, nice. he's put the invasion stripes on. As he says, it's his model, so why not? Whether it's factually accurate or not, he doesn't care. Very nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's the type and stuff. They, they look brilliant with the uh, the D-Day stripes on. Anyway, I just love that blue. The contrast of that blue yeah. nose and then like the shark mouth there. That's look at that engine detail on the side there yeah that blue really sets it apart yeah it makes it pop i like that that's really cool oh and then oh i close up there's quite a lot of detail in the the ammo cases and everything yeah oh yeah yeah it's a, a stonking kit look at that that would be a kit i would build i like propeller airplane so yeah stephen potter Big props, man. I like that. Big props. <laughs> All right. yeah. Okay, so what else have we got? Oh, here's right. Frank's really Christmassy tonight. Um, this was a truck that he told me that he got. Ford no. Louisville line truck with body by Trailmobile with a Coca Cola on it. So he's. Holidays are good. coming. Holidays are coming. Yeah. It's the season. Now, knowing Frank, I was looking at this and I'm thinking Frank likes his LEDs. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going to go with this? But yeah, that looks fantastic. Um, so that's just a single photo, but that's, that's what he's working on at the moment. He's just primed the, the chassis rails and the engine. Right, my friend from Down Under, Mr. John Blythe. Now, I do like this. i still dabbling in. Um, dioramas and stuff and he, he, he does go on if, if you're in smoothscape um you can read all his blurb but he's on about how things in a, in um a sort of jungle there are dead things and living things growing through the dead things and all the different yeah. things. A bit of there, so we'll go in and see what he's done um so this is kind of him doing like a little jungly bit i i just like the attention to detail there's a new shoot coming up through there mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that, I'll tell you what, that is not easy to get that looking that natural. Um, yeah, because you, you, you end up putting like symmetrical patterns on when you try to do random, don't you? Yeah, and, and the thing is, um, to make, uh, what, was this, what was it somebody once told me? It's really difficult to make something that's so messy naturally look great artificially. Mm. Because you can spot it a mile away when it's been done wrong. I take it as it finds and yeah, he's yeah. now that he's got like a, a, a muddy track going through the middle of it, and yeah. on both sides you've got the jungle vegetation, and must have taken him absolutely bloody ages. Yeah, spot on, isn't it? It's brilliant. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. yeah, I've yeah. used. So obviously, he's going to put possibly some sort of vehicle or something in the muddy bit um and that's all the, the jungle i yeah, like that to put a jeep or something going through there or whatever really anything a lot of attention to details and lovely photos as well yeah love that well yeah. you've been hard at work most of life um frankie goes uh, to hobbywood says this jungle is absolutely scaled yeah, it's stunning, isn't it? Right, we are, are man for me down in his shed. <laughs> hey, it's Devon boy. Hey, it's <laughs> Mr. Paul Shelton himself. Now, this is um, a smaller version than uh, what uh, uh, Ted did on e-models, obviously. I have, but it's, it's apparently a very good kit, Paul, is it? Yeah, very good. One, one, one four, four scale, what money's in that kit? About seventeen pounds to buy. How much? About seventeen pounds. And I've got to say, before you go further on with that, yeah. he has nailed the weathering on this. Thank you, Mark. The Thank weathering you. is absolutely fantastic. So, for those that don't, don't know, this particular kit has one side that's fully complete, and then another side is cut away to show all the interior and everything on it. So that's pretty cool. All the cutaways and everything like that. Never built a submarine, I don't think. No, I've never built one. But if if you look along where he's got all the the, the ports and where the oh, man. Try the streaking and uh, yeah, amazing, amazing work there on the. I feel like I've done. As somebody yeah. that cannot do weathering, I I can't do weathering. I struggle with it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm I really amazed when I see it like that. Paul, uh, oh, were you trying to say something there? Well, it's the first time I tried weathering, really. It's not a thing I do normally, but, yeah. Well, the engine is... So, for, actually, for a wee, a wee 144 scale um, sub, there's actually quite a lot of detail on it. It looks nice. Yeah, it's a brilliant kit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not that there that's just that's the side that's obviously not cut away I do you like that that's really nice fraser green says uh see the submarine kit i have the crazy notion to buy a sub irl and make it into a house that kit would be good uh, 3d well, of concept model um i don't understand quite what I've had too much to drink. See that submarine kit? Oh, I have the crazy notion to buy a sub Earl and make it into a house. That'd be quite cool, actually. Make a submarine into a house? I never thought about that. Ah, right, here's another one to pull now. I do like this one as well. Um, Let's see if I can enlarge it. Oh, sorry. In real life, Earl means. I didn't know that. Sorry, Fraser. Um, this is the Revell Land Rover. Is it the new one, Paul? Yeah, it's the brand new Revell one. That's another good kit. Yeah. Is this, is this coming up okay on StreamYard? Is everybody able to see yeah. this all in chat and everything? Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice kit, that, actually. It is a great oh. kit. I like oh. all the um, aluminium plating on the top of the uh, the wings and all that. Was that with the kit? No, that's an add-on. All oh, right. right. How do I go back to this? Right, there we go. I like that. Cool. And where did you get that from? 
the new new tool gravel kit, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, great. I was asking about the aluminium plate you put on top of the wings. Yeah, I've done. Yeah, that was excellent. Oh, oh good God! Somebody's done a smooth. <laughs> Oh, that's that, that's this oh is this this is a short hole uh, um the one he's turning into coca-cola truck so yeah that we saw those bits primed he's also working on the with it being an amt kit i can see i'm having to do a lot of work on it um to get it to fit because they're notoriously yeah there's loads of wee chunks and stuff that I'll, you'll have to clean up because these amt kits are a bit basic Oh, like that. That's the Coca Cola one that um, yeah. he's having a go at. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah. Uh, nice. Oh, Bob Bobbington. Oh, is, oh he's. Is this the Tomcat that you are all doing, or is this his own one? That's his Tomcat he's doing. It's the uh, 48 scale little airy one. He's nearly finished it now. Yeah, Bob likes his big lines. He's, um, <coughs> that's a big, big plane, isn't it? Mm. You, wait, you, you wait till you see the one he got sent. <laughs> oh, what's he been sent? I sent him the 30 second scale one. What, the Tomcat? Yeah. What size is that? That 148? Yeah, that's 148. Oh my that's god. This this is a an earlier post for John Blythe. Obviously, you can go into um, Smooth Cave and have a look. Uh, it's sort of the pre prior to what we just saw of his jungle um, stuff. Uh, that, this is Frank doing his his wee VW Golf again um, and starting all the snow and everything before he's put all his trees and everything on. Yeah, LEDs make such a difference to something like a car. Yeah, and the good thing um the mark is it the mark one golf this is the golf gti the headlights were always maybe it's a european thing always slightly yellow they weren't quite white so he's used warm white leds instead of bright white ones yeah but i was going to say that, that yeah he's, he's got that right hasn't he mm -hmm. yeah the european headlights are slightly different from ours obviously this is johnny blythe has been giving us a step by step on this jungle thing i haven't been on um the cave for ages so apologies for that so that's obviously um bob doing more stuff how john started off with his foam blocks and stuff so if, if you've never done a dial before and you're, you're kind of interested in you know what's involved he's he's put quite a lot of detail in um what he's been up to and yes, that's what i think this was me trying a, a live november my first time in a year so and that's more of uh that was an update of his land job that he done so what i'll do is i'll just refresh this Slangiva. Slangiva. Yes, Slangiva. now do remember if you fancy another way of supporting the channel is grab your i've got two daft t-shirts uh over at teespring um i've got one that's gluing your things to your face since 2017 and the other ones are oh, trying to remember now i've got two across there oh hello um the ashima bike that nearly ended up in the bin nice that Bjorn Ooh, did. very nice is that a eh? yeah that's the kit we built is that the one that i've still got finished yeah, it actually looks as he's painted his in the same color as mine. Can I? Is that better? No, it's the it. That's the one I've still got to finish. Yeah. Yeah. And did he spot the mistake? He didn't. I'm not going to tell him what it was, but John pointed it out to me in the kit itself. It doesn't give you a brake line from the top of the caliper to the hose that then goes off up. It's missing in the kit. You have to you have to scratch build one. So yeah, and that's not your fault. That's not actually in the kit itself. The front the front brake line stops there on that bracket and doesn't go down to the caliper. So 
if you fancy a bit of scratch building, that's missing from the kit and would be on. I've got that. I think I he's. I think he's. Paid. Sorry, on you go. I says I've got man here. Right, we'll go into that in a wee second. Right, okay, so he's used him a URL. Right, okay, for uploading it. That's right, take us off. Thanks, driving home for Christmas. That's me caught up, so I'll come back on here. And if I go back onto stop screen sharing, are we all back? Yeah, driving yeah. home for Christmas. So yeah, that's just a quick view of what's been happening in uh, Smooth Cape. Obviously, it's been quiet because I haven't been attending it for the past 11 months. So I have to give a big shout out to all the admins and mods on there. Sue's one, uh, Grant's one, but they, they're, they're kind of keeping it, kept it ticking along whilst I was away trying to get better and things like that. So thanks for that. But um, yeah, if we're going to be doing these regular, it's definitely worth putting um, Whatever you're working on, even if it is Gundam, um, stick it on there. Put, put some nice clear pictures up and a little description of what what you're doing, what stage you're at, what it is, what scale it is, what paint you're using. Gives us something to talk about when we when we do. Because um, what we'll do a wee debrief for the guys after to see if they enjoyed it, and obviously uh, uh, a few guys in the, in the chat. Uh, would enjoy the idea of the night live stream coming back again and doing like page reviews and things like that again. It all depends on you guys. Uh, again, as I say, this stream yard thing costs money every month if you want to upgrade the features, and it's not something I can do on my own. So, you know, again, I said I wouldn't push the Patreon thing, but if 20 people were to donate a dollar each once a month, that would pay for it, the stream. But there we go. Right, I'm going to catch back up in the chat. Did I miss anything? You kind of kept on top of it, Mark, didn't you? Yeah, there wasn't. Um... Oh, Josh, Josh has come in. Um... Ken Sturrock's in from down under. Morning, all. So I will, I will get a plug in. Actually, um, we do a podcast. All right. Well, there you go. Yep. Um, yeah, we do a podcast. It comes. Uh, we're on a break at the moment, um, but we're starting again in uh, January. Um, there's me, Josh, and Gordon, and uh, so we have this podcast that runs. It's available on Castbox, Spotify. Um, it's on Google, I believe. I'm trying to get it on Apple at the moment. Have you got links up to uh, about uh, what you need to connect to that on your uh, Spruce Surgeries page? Um, no, but if you go to Sprucast, if you go onto Facebook and type in the name Sprucast, that's a capital S, capital C, all one word, um, everything you need is, is there. Right, and cool. we, we it's it's just an audio only, um, and we cover a range of topics. We have special guests on regularly, and um, yeah, it's just something to listen to while you're on your way to uh, wherever. Put your headphones in, listen to it on a night. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's it. That, I'm going to get that plug in there. Sorry, Terry. Yeah, no, quite right. I've, I've, I've not something I've ever tried or thought about doing. I suppose it's basically like a radio show that you download these podcasts. Yeah, it's like a radio show without any music. That sounds bad, actually, doesn't it? It sounds really dreary. <laughs> well, it, it's, well, I mean, you've got to remember we're all guys that sit in our bedrooms gluing bits of plastic together. We're not yeah. really the most exciting people in the world. A radio show with no music. Yeah, and a few old guys going, well, I had this rebel kit, yes. Yes, yeah, and then we, then we applied the glue, and my God. Yes. It's, 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 it's something we've just started. Uh, we're still learning. So do you get every now and again, you go, and now, sponsored by Nando's, who helps support this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No. There, there are other chicken diners available 
<laughs> no, 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 not yet. Anyway, Nando's. I go past that place and music is just dire. And I don't I've mean never dire. Been to Nando's. I've never, I've never eaten in there. I, yeah, it's probably quite nice. I've never uh, been to Nando's. So Fraser Green has actually got a proper modelling question. Um, really? Yeah, if he was going to paint something light grey, would white be a good base? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I answered that. You can build up the colour to your desire after that, then. Yeah, I, I said yes, and I'm just yeah. waiting for anyone to say that I'm wrong, but I said yes, you'd be okay with that. Yeah, I, I, especially with a light grey. You could go in with a dark grey, but just always remember whatever primer you put under whatever colour will tint your top coat. For example, if you're putting red down and you put a grey primer under, it's going to be more of a maroony colour. If you put white down, it's going to be more of a pink colour. If you put yellow down, yellow and red makes it pop. But if you're doing light grey, you you want to go lighter than the colour you're putting on so you can see where you're going to start with. And then you can just build the colour up to the shade of yeah. So if, if you yeah, sorry. Um, if you if you want to put if you want a red that really pops, put a yellow down. Yeah. 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 The, the Steinle Rays yellow is brilliant for, for for red on top. Um, what was Audric on about the half meter wingspan? Was that that one that, that model that Bob was doing? Typhoon. Oh, the typhoons. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, Half a meter, it's as big as a, a bloody RC plane, then almost beyond. Yeah, a big remote control. Put a couple of jet thrusters in, and fuck me. Why uh, orange, isn't it? Sorry, Paul. Why is it yellow for orange? Fraser's asking. If you're spraying orange, yeah, yeah, white or yellow, wouldn't it? Underneath, orange, mm, mm, put yellow. I don't know. I've never had to spray orange yet. I know if you're doing gold, putting a brown primer down pops gold, but orange. Um, when I do white, I put a black primer down. I've done that, but it depends what paint you're using, because some whites will not cover black. Um, I usually use Tamiya. If, if, I'm, if I'm spraying white, Stino Reds do a very light rose pink primer. I tend to put that under, and then you can clearly see where you're going with your white. But you've got to build it up enough so that the pink doesn't show through. But if you're wanting white, white, then white primer, admit, a tiny, tiny drop of red in it. I've got to admit, if I was painting white, I wouldn't put black down. That's yeah. just me. It works. It, it works with the likes of your Warhammer stuff because their paint pigments are so thick. Um, I've never I've never done that combination, but um, my, my LC is black primer with uh, numerous coats of um, no. Yeah, I went black and then I went white primer. And my white primer didn't work out, and I had to sand it all back. I, I went um, white lacquer over the top of black stainless primer. Okay. Right. Yeah, um, tell me your paints, but I was struggling. No one finished in it. Yeah, Tamiya paints are a bit more translucent, but I'm I'm working quite a lot with lacquers now, and you know yourself, lacquers is what you paint cars with, and it tends to have far better coverage. Yeah. Um, I think Mark mentioned that one about Frankie was saying the jungle's absolutely stale and it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Uh, oh, Fraser! I wonder what Mark was on about. Fraser had the notion to buy a sub, a real submarine. Ah, oh, I make it in a house. No good if you're my height, because you're quite restricted for headroom and to keep banging your, your head every time you yeah. it, it It thrown me with the Earl. He kept putting Earl. IRL in real life, yeah. I, I didn't know what that meant. My name is Earl. <laughs> yeah, I just kept reading Earl. And I'm thinking, oh, right, okay, Earl. <laughs> I think I was thinking of URL. I thought it was oh, like a link. Yeah, I thought it was a link he was trying to get across or something. 
Beyond, beyond saying that green that he's done his bike is candy racing green, it's very similar to the Mr. Colour. The one I did mine in, a metallic green, the Mr. Colour um, M77. Oh, right. That's, John's done his, um, as it shows you on the box. That's the same bike, mate. Uh, uh, that, uh, uh, is the bit that's missing. Yeah, the little pipe that connects the caliper up to the, the pipe in the fork leg. It doesn't come with a kit. And that's I think right. you, added, you added throttle cables as well, I didn't bother. Quite a lot of bike kits don't come with throttle cables. And yeah. you have to add them yourself. You do, it with, do you do it with a paper clip, don't you? I use a plastic tubing because I even put the overflow pipes on the bottom of the carbs as well. No, but I'm on about if you have to add a speedo cable, because normally you get the metal bit of tubing coming out for the bar. Yeah. And then, yeah. So a paper clip. Yeah. Usually, if I'm making throttle cables up, I use a, a thin paper clip and a piece of plastic tubing to it looks like the nuts and bolts and stuff that's on it, and then run the cable round. But most of the plastic cables and stuff, the hoses that are used on the bikes, so I use various thicknesses. I run a piece of copper wire or a piece of lead wire down it so it holds the shape. I do that, yeah. You put the wire down. Because sometimes when you, you try and bend them around complex curves, they just kink. They kink. Tell me a tube yeah. just kinks or whatever. And if you put copper in it, it tends to retain its shape. Uh, yeah. Just a copper wire. Um, just looking at Fraser Green's comment about uh, orange. Right, yeah. And I... I don't know, just thinking about it, I'm wondering whether yellow might be a good... If I was putting orange down, I'd put a, a base coat of white down first, then yellow. Then the orange on top. Yeah. He's doing 40k, so the Citadel paints are a bit different. They're really thick. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, it depends on your paint choice, because the Citadel paints come in different types. You get base colours. Um, most people these days spray their citadels uh, with black primer. All of them in the black primer. Um, and then you've got your base colours. Now, if you're using an orange that is a citadel base colour, it'll paint over any colour that's underneath. If you're using a layer colour, which is designed to go over the top of the base, they're more translucent and will show the colour through its underneath. So provided the orange that you're painting on your Warhammer is a base colour and not a layer, it doesn't matter what colour primer you've got underneath. I hope that helps a bit. But if you're using Tamiya paints or whatever, then go with what John says. Build, build your lighter colours up. But if you're, if you're doing 40k, these Citadel paints, you can paint the white over black and you don't see any of the black underneath. Um, they're so opaque. If, it, if it's a base colour. So you've got your base, your layers, and your washes and all that sort of thing. So it depends if you're using a base or a layer colour paint. Uh, if you're using a base, it'll be thick enough to, thick enough to cover over whatever colour primer Citadel paints. Just remember, two thin coats. <laughs> hey guys, how are you all? Fair in the way, how long have we done about? Two hours and 15 minutes, it's come up a quarter past 11, you, you want to call it a, an evening? We've still got about 20 folk in, but the, the chat's not really <laughs> Oh, Bob's came up with an interesting one. If he was doing orange, he would use a silver underneath it. Now, I know Spino Res do do a metallic silver primer, but hmm, interesting. Oh. I've done a red over a gold once, and it looked amazing. Hmm. I suppose it depends what paints you're using and, and, and what circumstances you Yeah. But you the, 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 the whole yeah. set of the old. Oh, you Gordon saw it as well, didn't you? When I done that gold and then I put the red over the top, it looks. Yeah, well, this is it. You, you, were, you were going to put a silver base down with clear red over the top, didn't you? To start with. Yeah. Oh, yeah, can no. Try, try it with a, uh, with a gold base coat and then put your clear right over the top. And he did it one night to the hag and he goes, wow. <laughs> he wow, was a, gold, a golden red candy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, so it wasn't red paint, sorry. It was clear red. Uh, gold, clear red. But 
it, uh, when I've done the clear red, it was built up over about seven layers. I put it on so thin and I just gradually built it up and it looked, um, honestly, when I finished it, it was so amazing. I have never ever um, managed to spray something that looks so fantastic, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it I'll, just, I'll get on to Paul and I'll be saying he's, he's going to show you some. But I, going on about the gold, uh, this has settled out. There's a lot of red pigment in gold paint. Yeah. And that's where the red and the gold work. Right, Paul is going to show us a motorcycle. Give me two seconds, Paul. I'll click on you. He's oh. been building something. Where are we? There he is. Now that's a, a, that's a um, clear red over a silver. Oh, that's a nice candy. Yeah, it gives it just that. Candy. That's Sue's, actually. That's one Sue's done. What's that? The yeah. Yamaha oh, it's it's or something? It's the Vlago. Oh, yeah, Vlago. She done that one. That's the red over the silver. She also done a Honda. My mate actually had a Vlago. That's a pretend Harley. That's the. That's a clear blue over a silver. Oh, blue candy. Oh, is that a CB400 or something? Or? Yeah, uh, CB750. 750. Oh, that's, Mark. That's yep. clear silver. That's silver, then uh, clear blue. That's nice. Uh, that's Sue's. That's what she's. <laughs> she's getting better than you, Paul. Right. Uh, just try to find Mark now because she's pulled out a car. Is this the one you did the red over the goal? Well, it's not the original one because the original one was a lot better than this. But um, this was, yeah, this is the red over the gold. Um, and I, I'm i trying to remember. Um, I didn't put any gloss over this, did I? No. no. So you saw that clear, put that, and then I mess it back and stuff. Aye. That's how... I, I just couldn't believe it. I was blown away. I got this really amazing shine off. It's like a candy orange, isn't it? Really, when you do the gold and the red, like yeah. a deep candy orange. Yeah, and this wasn't this wasn't the best result. Um, I had to. I had a couple of incidents with this kit, and I had to sand it back and redo it again. The yeah. first one that I'd done was the best one, um, but unfortunately. Is that one of those American AMT kits? Uh, yes, it was. It wasn't a very good kit. It was an awful kit, in fact. There, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, Revel boxing of it, weren't it, Bart? Oh, but yeah. it was an AMT then. Oh, it, it was right. awful. That um, Peterbilt truck I've got Ravel, but it's a 1970s, well, I can't even mind the name of it, but it's an American manufacturer's kit and it's dire. Um, yeah, yeah, this was. I'm just going to catch it on shit again. It was nice to actually see some of Sue's models. Um, um, candy Racing Green. Oh, a new name in, uh, Risedom Design. Hello. Uh, hi, Mark. Yeah. Was Josh. Was that Josh? Hiya, Josh. Yeah, that's Josh. Yeah. Right, so that's what Ride Some Design is Josh. That's one of the chaps that does the podcast for you, Mark. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've answered that one. Josh is saying nice Virago, so that was Sue's Virago. I do like that Virago, actually. Uh, as I say, my mate used to actually have a real one because um, he couldn't have it hardly. Uh, Frankie Crystal Hobby would say beautiful candy colours. So uh, basically, um, it's up to you guys in the chat. If you want to keep the chat bouncing and stuff like that, we'll carry on for a little bit longer. Um, otherwise, we'll start kind of wrapping up. Now, Spruce Surgeon, Mark has brought a, oh, this is interesting me. A motorcycle. Ooh. What motorcycle? Not finished yet. Right? It's not finished. But um yeah. This is um the Suzuki 
Um, Honda. Honda, yeah, that's it. That one as well. Is that an RCV213? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the 211. Is it the 211? Oh, the 211. I've got that, but I've not got the Aggie colours for it. Or the Um, As you're looking at it now, it's been sanded down. Um, It's waiting for a finished coat on it. So um, that's why it looks a bit flat. Right. Just wait um, on it. It's got it's uh yeah, it's just waiting on its um nice one. Is that your first bike? No, no, I've built others, but that's uh oh, what what size is that? Looks bigger than one twelve, is it? Yeah, it's, that is I can't remember what size it is. One is it one ninth? One ninth, yeah, because that that's the one twelve. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um Right, John's. That's a one twelve one. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's a Tamiya one. Is that yeah. a Prota? Is it Prota? That, that one that Mark's got is the rubble boxing of the Prota kit. Right, I thought it was a Prota. It's about big, so it'll be yeah. one night scale. Yeah. Gordon's just got tiny hands. <laughs> I've I've got the same kit, but in the, fl the Rossi flower power one. All right, okay. That's, I, I thought it was, I'm looking at it, I'm going, that's bigger than a 112. See, that, that one Mark's got, I've got the same kit as Mark's got, but in them colours. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that is nice, yeah. See, that oh, kit that Mark's got. So is that a 213 then, or is that a 211? Yeah. That one that Mark's got, they did three versions of it. They did that one. That one and the um, Telefonica movie star, the blue one. I've seen the Telefonica movie star one. It's all the same bike. Uh, yeah, it's all the same bike. Cool. <laughs> Get my, see, I've been so out of touch what everybody's been up to. Just different what? decals. How was that Prota or Rebel kit to go together, Mark? How did you enjoy it as, as a bike experience? Yeah, I liked it. I was told that it would be dreadful, um, but I, I really didn't have any trouble with it. Uh, I, well, with one exception, there's, um, there's two tiny little pieces that go on the swinging arm, yeah. and they snapped. Oh, is that the foot pegs? No. <sighs> No, no, and that's why this is so. Loose oh, is that the here. Right, okay, yeah. There are two little link arms underneath it. Yeah, the yeah. Well, one of them broke, and it broke in such a way that it's not possible to repair. Oh, that's a shame. Um, but yeah, you know, you don't really notice it when it's built up. I can. Um, if I position it just right, you can see where the the broken link is. But oh, it seems like the link arms at the bottom of the shots. Yeah, you, you're not going to see it. So it's um yeah, it just needs a, a clear coat one. on it now. John, will correct me if I'm wrong. Did Protar not originally? Is Protar not the one that you brought that kit originally, or a lot of kits out in one nine scale that were actually die cast? And some yeah. bought gold and put plastic in, so a lot of the stuff is yeah. over scale. I, I've got one of the original Protar NS 500 with the aluminium frame. I'm trying to think of them. One of the more recent ones we brought out there was a Triumph. With, was it a Triumph with a aluminium tank? That was Norton. Norton. That yeah. was a Protar kit, and yeah, it was. It was kind of out of scale that's one of the more recent ones yeah yeah because uh frankie goes to hollywood about the uh panigara ducati that's the colors i'm doing man it oh gorgeous yeah i like panigara. that yeah oh, what's what's paul paul's got something down well, that's the Jota. yeah yeah that's the old pro target that's quite a rare kit actually well a rare bike is that Laverda Jota, is it? Eh? Laverda Jota. Yeah. It's it's a rare bloody kit and all that is. I was going to say that. I've seen yeah. them in my life at the bike show. Uh, old Italian 
Yeah. Uh, it's a hard kit to do that one actually. All, all, all the stuff's coming out now. I'm trying to get more festive with a comic Christmas tree. I found that it actually just sits on the shirt with all the all the things. What else are you bringing out there, Mark? You've got a, a figure. Oh, 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 I don't write. Who's first in? Mark's just wheeled a figure out. And John's got a GSE bastard. Um, who will go to first? You want to talk about your figure, Mark? Um, Mark? Good so, Mark. Yeah, this is part of... Uh, so, uh, Gilbert Mondragon's got a, a group build on for figures. And I was kindly sent this um, by a friend. Um, and it's basically a Viking. And what I've done was I cut his hand off. So he's basically he's the, the rest of his hand is down there. <laughs> the sword. And then at the top, what I've done is, if it will focus for me. Put your hand behind it. And take it away from the camera, but there you go. I got the 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 marrow and the stumps of yeah. the hand. <laughs> and he's got a bit of blood on his face and beard. If that will, yeah, freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, all I've got left to do on this is the handle of the axe. Which mm -hmm. I, I did get a bit of blood on the axe as well. Oh dear! And um, I'm busy on the the shield at the moment. I thought it was a CD at first when you picked it. <laughs> yeah, and there's his. Uh, there's somebody else's. Um, oh, it's not going to focus. Face in plate. Oh, it's like a face plate or something like that. Yeah, it's a face yeah. plate, and I've. Just trying to see if I can get it in. There we go. There's a bit of blood on that and all. So it's a pretty gruesome, um, pretty gruesome build. And you can see there's blood in the grass and Ew. bits of mud. And it's a bit of a a bloody good kit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed painting this. Um, and there we go. So that's yeah, that's the Viking. That's going to be my entry for the uh, Gilbert Mondragon's figure build. Yeah, he does a lot of figures, Gilbert. That's the American chap, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he, he's way. I've just, I just spotted uh, smooth flashing lights. So I'm like, yeah, I was, I've seen it John earlier on. It's one of these wee electronics. I don't know where to put it, but because you snip all the connections off the back, it actually grabbing on my t-shirt. So I've got it sitting on my t-shirt with a nine volt battery just dangling down. Yeah, I've like like a five-year-old. I've been drawn in by the lights. I'm just a flasher. Yeah, okay. John, <laughs> John. You might hear people referring to John as Gordon because it's Gordon's alive. Uh, also known as Three Sheets. So um, to save confusion on Facebook, he's called Gordon Bennett. Gordon Bennett. Um, mm -hmm. His real name's John. So if you hear them talking about Gordon, they're talking about John. So, yeah, you, you showed a kit there, mate, that I'm going to snap your hand off for. Oh, about 1986. I was just a young lad. Yeah, but uh, look who makes it. Oh, it's that Gala. Ooh. Yeah. I haven't tried any of their kits, actually. So does that come before where it's your stand-up? Or is that you? She might do that. The detail on the engine casing. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Never mind that. Yeah. Look at the Africa twin in the background. Mm, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> no. He's not allowed to tell me about that. Yeah, it's quite nice. I tell you what, pretty decent, like. So these the the new breed of Hazigawa kits that they're bringing out. So is that oh, a new release? Yeah, I've got right. it's a new tooling and everything. It's not a V-box or no. Yeah, I've got a Hasegawa KH400 and a GT380. Wow, that's one 
it's 400 no uh triple yeah 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 i've seen one of them at the bike show i know right and this this is the erishima cb 404 i'm building for somebody all right As in the Honda 404. Yeah. Aoshima do one. Yeah. And that's oh, that my one of my mates had a yellow one. It's the, the the 400 Super no Super Dream of Super Sport yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right, I'm going to, need to start looking at some of their kits then because um I like a lot of the obviously I grew up with bikes in the 80s and I like 80s bikes. And Tammy, I don't do a lot of 80s bikes. They don't do a lot of vintage bikes or classic bikes either. Uh, and uh, Aoshima, what was the other one? Hasegawa. Yeah. Another crap one that does. They didn't used to be on the same par as Tammy. If you're saying the new ones are. I'll tell you what, the, the detail in this uh, GSX 750, the NSR 500s, the YZR 500. Wait, uh, there's. You say the NSR 500, is that the ones that you can't get a hold of in Tamiya because you were wanting to do a start lineup? Because uh, I'm pretty sure I've got I've got an original Tamiya one and you went there like gold dust to get now. Yeah, but these these are the later bikes. These these came after that one. Right, all right, okay. Now that looks a little bit like, yeah, I'm just looking at the, the detail of that on it. Looks a bit generic. It doesn't look bad. Their artwork's not that great. But the, de the detail in these kits is unreal. Well, they've improved then because the I heard they weren't quite up to Tamiya standards. Well, the first one of theirs was the. Uh, oh, where is it? Can't find it. But that, that. Um, they are ones that are no longer available for the Tamiya range, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I'm just catching up with the, the chat because um, I'm that far behind. Uh, Mark was, um, or oh, they were all showing on, on different candies. Uh, Frankie was on about beautiful candy colours. Fraser's going at that supper all bike. There's been loads on, so obviously I'm just catching up. Um, Josh is saying I need a bike kit now. If you've never tried building a 112 scale kit, uh, bike kit, try it. Uh, Frank is going to stop it, Mark. I can't see the blood. <laughs> and I think I just answered what Fraser said. Oh, no, actually, uh, what's the deal behind the whole Gordon Bennett saying? Like, where did it come from? I'll let John answer that one. Well, when I was a youngster, um, if, you, if you swore in the house, you got to pick round the ear hole. So it was a bit of a slang saying for it says like, oh, bloody hell. When you were a kid and getting a smack, you go, "Oh, Gordon Bennett." But how did you get called Gordon Bennett? That's a story you were born. I walk. <laughs> I walked into uh, when I was at college, and I was a biker and stuff. I walked into a biker's pub, and one of the guys knew me from college, and he just shouts out, "Oh, hey, Gordon, Gordon Bennett," and it stuck. So everyone was calling me Gordon. So it's like it's like uh, last Friday I went out to uh, a biker's do, right? And I met a couple of them, and I was on the stage comparing as I walked in, and he goes, "Oh, is our newest member? He's Gordon Bennett," and they all started cheering. Yeah, I so. I'm, I'm sitting munching away here on a caramel, caramel, um, 
That's a 380. Yeah, you can't get that one at the moment. No, they've got a bit scarce, ain't you, Paul? Yeah, I've been trying to get out of one, but I can't get one at the moment. Who's that? Yeah, Shima? No, Azzy Gower. Azzy? Mm. Yeah, same as that one. I remember the third one. There's Fujimi, Hasegawa, and Aoshima. Yeah. 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 Any more questions from the viewers? Or topics you want to discuss? Look, the three sheets and stuff I got from the other shows and stuff we used to do, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Sitting on your throne of decals. Yeah. <laughs> and the other joke was actually we've not seen him in for a while. Oh, what was his name for Spain? We always used to say that your kitchen door opened up into his shop because he works in a model shop, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, what's his name again? Apologies that I've forgotten so many people's names. Oh, used to be regularly on the show. I mean, used to have a crack with him and used to say, when you went through that door, you were going into his model shop because you'd always come through yeah. our kid. Yeah. Oh, I right. can't, remember. <clears throat> can't remember off the top of my head. Thank you for the good wee crack at the whip for the first test. Um, I'm quite liking this programme as far as usability um, with YouTube goes. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that's popped in this evening for our Oh, what's Roderick saying? Nice vintage bikes, Paul. Build them soon and show us the final builds. Or it might be might be John that we're talking to. But uh, yeah, feel free to join um, Smooth Cave and uh, through surgery as well. Mark's muted himself just now, but we both have uh, the Facebook sort of groups. Uh, an admin will need to add you, but it's uh, real easy to join. Um, uh, it was John Roderick that had the, uh, some nice vintage bikes. It's the era I grew up when John grew up with all the 70s. Well, this, this, this is it. When I started making model bikes, you couldn't get any of the vintage stuff. Nobody did it. But now they started to bring them all out. Look, the oldest kit I can remember was uh, one of my first bikes was uh, Matchbox Black Shadow. Was it Black Shadow? Um, yeah, Vincent. Vincent Black Shadow. Vincent Black Shadow. And yeah. see to try and get one now. Yeah. The money they're wanting for them. It's like it's like trying to pick up a <laughs> a barachine on the RGV RG five hundred. Mm. The ridiculous money. Is that the one that I've got? The, no, 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 no. I don't have that one. Uh, the one with the rider figure on. <coughs> <clears throat> oh, I don't know where Mark's disappeared to, but I think we've been on for a good um, two hours and forty minutes. Um, I'm, I'm eating to... toast. Eh? He's having I'm toast. What's on it? I'm eating toast. What's on it? Salmon toast. Oh, salmon toast. Oh, no, no. I used to eat stuff on meat paste. But I used to make brown sauce with it. Well, at least he's not got jelly on it. <laughs> or a jelly and ice cream. <laughs> so what's Frank is saying? Enjoyed the full live stream on a weekend off. What could be better? Sex. Sex is better, Frankie. We all, we all need to know. You're, all, you're all right, Paul. I think Sue's got that cradle set up to you now. So when we, we finish up here, he's going away for a wee swing. I think she's done that. They've got the goat tethered in the back garden and all. <laughs> What's well, Josh saying? Live streams can be fun and full of surprises. Well, as I say, it's the first sort of group live stream I've done in about a year. Um, thinking about doing it as a regular thing on a Saturday, as I say, again, to get the features unlocked, it's not something I can afford myself. So but I'll put it out to you guys and see what happens. Um, we can do so many uh, hours of free. Um, live streaming with this program and then when it runs out it's like say we use it up over three weekends and we were doing one every saturday we wouldn't be able to do a fourth one um so yeah we're going to play it by ear um just a quick question from roderick keen um are some of those kits better than tamia in your opinion those new ones that you were on about with it 
Uh, yeah, especially this. Um, that one is. That one is. And the K8 400. But then in the Tamiya ones, if you try to get hold of the Tamiya version, they're like hen's teeth. Because I, I know Tamiya have got a habit of re releasing uh, old kits with, with new um, cartograph decals. But it's. Yeah, the thing, the thing, Tammy has lost the um, the license for doing Ferrari, so Ferrari Tammy kids are going to get rare. There was something with the county as well because they brought out a pan of galley with a white side on it, but they couldn't put the advertising on because the advertiser said no. Yeah, so I've got that one there. And um, the reason they're not doing um, Ross's bikes anymore and the NSR 500 is to do with sponsorship. You can't get the rights to print the decals. You could build the kit. You could you could tell the kit, and then somebody could do aftermarket decals for them. But Tamiya like to do the whole package, so I suppose they would have to pay the sponsors money to be allowed to reproduce their logos. I suppose it's a, it's it's intellectual property. They call it, isn't it? IP. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is it. You, you, you're talking big bucks to uh, get a license. I mean that that kit that Frankie got me. Um, that this is just an example. When Rebel's probably paid a fortune to do that. And that's what Frankie got me for Christmas. But there's a, a logo on the corner here uh, that is licensed by Daimler Benz. Yeah, a hologram there. They would have had to pay through the nose. Um, yeah. To get that the rights to do that um, kit. And then you add that to the R and D costs and all that, and the new tooling, and if it's decals and they can't get the rights to it, they'll just go. There's the bike. Yeah, well, this kit, the uh, NSR five hundred, the one that you've got, uh, the Repsol one. Yeah. It's down to sponsorship. It's down to money. That's that's why they've not redone them. <coughs> so the guys that are doing the aftermarket decals for it are basically making them up themselves yeah, yeah. and they're, they're not licensed yeah <gasps> you know, this is it they'll, they'll do a run of say a thousand decal sheets and then that's it once they've gone they've gone mm -hmm. it's like the yz rm 109 one of the most popular bikes out there that came out in four li four, four limited editions it's, yeah and, and, and they're all short runs, and now you, you can't get even just the base bike. No. And that's annoying because I've got two of them, and I would really like the other two. You can get aftermarket decals sheets for them, even if you could get the base bike like the Ross, but you can't get them. Well, you can get them, but people are wanting like £100 for a £40 kit. Yeah, well, this is it. I've got Ross's Fiat Yamaha. I've got that as well, along with a, deep, a lot of right. detail. Now, I'm. I'm still after the one because I've got the, the the tabby of kit with the rider figure. Hey, I've got that as well. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. So I'm going to put that on a little dio, but I also want to do his bike to put it in with the collection of his bikes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because you've got all the Rossi bikes, haven't you? Yeah, I'm still I'm still after another one, but I'm not I'm not going to pay silly money for it. Nah. And just wait for another. Um, re-release with a different logo on it by four and just buy the aftermarket decals for it and do the earlier one. Well, this is it. If I could get my hands on one of the M1s, mm -hmm. I ain't bothered about what tech was it's got because I've got the aftermarket ones for it. I've got, I've got two. Mm. You're not getting them. Right, as I was saying, um, I think we're going to wrap it up for this evening. Uh, Roderick was saying that's a shame about some of the Tamiya kits uh, on bikes and cars because they're very nice. Yeah. Um, that's one of these things, isn't it? We'll always find a way around it if, if, you, if you really want to get a bit of A lot of the models now that are limited runs, you're paying through the nose for them. Well, this, this is it. If, even if Tamiya brought out the Honda NS500, uh, NSR500, and just stuck um, the Honda race colours in it, the red, white and blue on delivery. Mm -hmm. At least it would be out there and people would start producing aftermarket decals for them again. 
Yeah, because all they want is like 10 NSR 500s to do a, a, a you know, a MotoGP lineup, and you can put all your different liveries of everybody on it. Yeah, well, that's what I did. Aftermarket. Yeah. Because right. I've got the, uh, what I did as a build team, I did the NS500, then I did the NSR500 right up to um, Eddie Lawson's one. And then you ran out of NSR500s to do the rest of them. Yeah, because I'm still so missing. <coughs> oh, it's a shame that when, when when you set your heart on trying to do something and then you can't get the can't get the kit without paying ludicrous amounts of money for what is literally a thirty or a forty pound kit. Yeah. Right, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you all again for tuning in. Uh, thanks, my guest Paul, Mister Plastic Monkey. He'd been sitting there quiet there in his little farm, and then he woke up for a bit and got his models there. Uh, yeah. To he Mark. Was just putting, he was just putting his wellies on when we when we collared him. Is that the one with <laughs> the puppets in the front for the sheep? Yeah. Uh, your shins. Um, Put his wellies on. Sue had got a Wurzel Gummidge outfit on. I like Sand Sally. I does a like Sand Sally. Um, big thank you to Mark uh, from Spruce Surgery for popping in. And Golden's alive. Thanks for John for joining me. It makes it a lot easier when you got people to bounce off of. Um, thanks all. Thanks also to everybody that's joining the chat. Munchkin Modeling Man has joined in quite late. We're just heading off, mate. Good evening, all. Happy holidays to you all. Um, but yeah, um, thanks everybody that's popped in and out uh, throughout the evening. We've done fairly well. We've averaged around about 15 to 20 viewers all night, which is quite surprising considering I've not done a Saturday night live for over a year. So well, I, um, told you, I told you it'd go well. So what we're going to do is we'll have a chat after the show. Uh, I certainly like this StreamYard program um, as far as being able to host it. And, and obviously I can still do the cave review and, and click on all the different people and stuff so it's we can have up to six we can have up to six on camera we can have 10 on the stream but only six on the camera so we can pull people in and out and stuff like that if we, if we had more people in um it's been faultless all night it's been and this is just a test version but as i say we're limited to hours that we can broadcast with it so i'm trying to keep the shows under three hours um so that we have enough if we do decide to do one um, every Saturday, if there's enough interest out there, um, then we've got enough in the free one to still be able to do it, and then we'll see if we can try and get some kind of help to Patreon or whatever to, to pay the monthly charge, and then we'll be guaranteed we'll be able to do it every Saturday or random shows. So it's up to you guys. Um, when the show <clears throat> ends just shortly, um, Obviously, YouTube's still got to compile it and all that. The comments section and everything will become available to you down below. So looking for feedback off you guys. Is it worthwhile us doing us a Saturday night again or, or just a once a month? Or anything you want to discuss, uh, keep it constructive. So there'll be a comment section down below. Also, show more tab underneath. Uh, I don't have marks on it, but if you're, if you're looking for the links to like, say, the Patreon or to... Um, my Instagram or anything like that. All the links are, are in the show more part of it. Um, and that will all show up um, once we end the show. So uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself tonight. Um, I hope you all have. So, yeah, thanks. It's been quite busy in the chat. Could you more people sitting chatting away. But uh, thank you very much for joining us. Have a very Merry Christmas. And you never know, I might come on Christmas Day and spoil your turkey. <laughs> I mean, uh, so night everybody thanks for coming on see you later good night, good night. Good night. Good night. click end